All right, folks, we are live. Welcome, welcome. Um, I'm going to take a few minutes and talk a little bit. At first, um, I'm not sure how many people are going to join tonight, but I'll give them a few minutes to filter in. I know in one of my the announcements that I made online, I forgot to mention what time zone I was in, so I don't know how many people are going to show up, but you'll be able to go back and watch the recording anyway. So um, just getting myself situated here what we're going to do tonight i'm going to try and go through as much as i can in one sitting hopefully i get through everything everything you're going to need to know about mining to get started uh, i've got two mining ships here in the station um, one of them is something that's not really out of reach for new players it's something that that you can get together in a relatively short amount of time and uh not too expensive, not a high rebuy. It, it won't be the greatest miner in the world, but it will get you started and earn some money. And I've also got um, got a larger mining ship, which is one of the primary ones that I use for mining on a regular basis. It's not the biggest mining ship in the world. You can make much bigger ships than it and carry a lot more cargo, but it fits what I do with it. It's big enough to uh, do what I would normally do in one play session. Uh, you can go with larger amounts of cargo if you want, or if you play for longer periods of time, that's just fine. I recommend kind of scaling it, your mining ship to what suits your play style or the amount of time you have to play in an ungiven session. If you can sit here and play, play the game for hours and hours and hours on end, by all means, go for a giant cargo ship with lots of cargo if you, you're confident you can handle something that slow and that big in a mine in a asteroid field uh, I would prefer something a little bit smaller that's just my preference you can do whatever suits you best either way you're gonna make a lot of money once you get up and running a mining so um, the first ship that I've got is a ship I'm in right now this is a Cobra Mark 3 it's um, well it's not gonna be the first ship that you have as a new person as a new player You'll probably take a little bit of time to work up to it, but it's the first ship you'll have that can do basically anything. You can mine with a smaller ship, but you won't get very far. I think the Cobra is really the first ship that has um, that has can carry enough cargo to really make it worthwhile. So what I've done is I also picked the Cobra for this because the Cobra has two small and two medium hard points, which means it can mount every single piece of mining equipment that there is. Again, um, smaller ships like the Hauler, um, you won't be able to carry much cargo, you won't be able to mine for very long, but you can start out mining in something like a Hauler, especially if you limit yourself to one of the types of mining that you're going to do. But if you want to do all types of mining and have enough cargo to uh, cargo capacity to make it more worth your while, you might want to wait until you can afford a Cobra. It's not that expensive. New players, you know, may take you. You're not going to be able to get it on day one, but after a few play sessions, when you really get on your feet, um, it's not that hard to work up the amount of money you'll need to outfit a Cobra. So, um, first things we'll go into Starport Services. We're going to take a look at how I built this ship out and talk about all the equipment that you're going to need. So we're going to go here into the outfitting section and take a look at the equipment. Yes, I put a fun paint job on it. <laughs> so first thing, we'll take a really quick look at the internals. There's not a lot of the core internals. There's not a lot special that I've done here. Um, I went with military grade because this was originally, I was originally using this as a combat ship. Um, it's probably a good idea to use military grade composites for your miner just in case somebody starts shooting at you because you will run into NPCs and even other players that are going to try and steal your cargo and possibly shoot you down so you're going to want some protection um, and later on we'll see something that kind of with this ship that kind of goes in the opposite direction um, you know, you want the large, uh, large enough power plant to do everything. If you look down at the bottom, it'll my total power with all my hard points deployed because I've packed so much different gear on this. This power plant just barely covers 
<laughs> and this is a not an not an engineered power plant either. It just barely covers all the equipment that I've got on this ship. Um, I've got A-rated thrusters. Um, it's a good idea to have good thrusters because again, if you get jumped by a pirate, you're going to want to be able to run away. And if you're in among the asteroids and try to maneuver in tight spaces to get a, to line up on uh, on the various targets that we're going to be shooting at to do the mining. Uh, you're going to want good thrusters to be able to be nimble and be able to move around. Uh, more experienced pilots will be able to do this in bigger, slower ships and squeeze them in weird places. Um, I only have a C-Class frameshift drive. Um, I would go bigger on this, um, but I think this was the largest frameshift drive that I found in the station when I built this thing. And it's probably a good idea that I didn't go bigger just because of uh, the power consumption here. Um, I like to run with A-class life support. Other people run with lower just because if your cap canopy gets shot out, you can stay up longer. Um, A-rated power distributor, yeah, because I'm going to be pushing a lot of power through all these uh, all these different mining tools. Sensors doesn't really matter. I go for D-rated because that's just uh, that's um, just the lightest. Um, your sensors aren't going to be really important for what you're going to be using this ship for, and a default fuel tank. That's it for internals. Uh, for core internals, not much to see there. It's mostly standard stuff. Um, you know, if you're going to aerate things, you want to aerate your power plant and your thrusters. Um, everything else is kind of optional. Uh, if you're going to aerate, uh, you might want to also aerate the power distributor, but if you can't find it, it's not that big a deal. And the, the others. It matters on your preference. You may want to juggle some of them just to get your power straightened because uh, Cobra only has so much power because uh, this is really the biggest power plant that I can shove in the thing. You can engineer this power plant and you won't have this problem. Uh, well, it's not really a problem, but uh, it's not really a problem, but at this limit to what you can put in there because you can, uh, if you do overcharge power plant, this will, uh, you won't have, you won't even be close to maxing it out. So let's take a look at our optional internals. This is where it gets interesting. This is where you have to start picking equipment. Now, notice I've got two of the largest um, cargo cargo racks that I can fit in here. Uh, I've got a total of 32 cargo on this thing. That's, in my opinion, that's barely enough to really do profitable mining. You can get by with less. Because remember that cargo space, you're going to have to carry your limpets on your way out and you're going to have to carry the the um, minerals or diamonds or whatever you're mining for that you've refined in this space too. So that's going to limit how long you can stay out and how much money you're going to make per run. Because, um, at, at max, Ideally you want to go out uh, with a full load of limpets and come back with uh, 32 tons of something really expensive like low temperature diamonds. Now I've squeezed in here a 4A refinery. Refinery is the thing that takes the pieces of the pieces of asteroids that you collected containing the various mineral ores and converts it into um, into the actual commodity that you can sell. The refineries have a bunch of slots. I recommend getting the biggest one you can you can get. I believe that the 4A refinery is the biggest refinery out there. And you can see from the numbers, um, it's got a number of bin count 10, the last number in the stats. That's the important one. That means there's 10 slots, so you can be refining 10 different minerals at the same time. As you're picking up pieces of minerals, uh, you'll have to pick up several pieces of mineral before you get one ton of commodity out of it. So what will happen is, while you're building up that much, that'll take up a slot in your uh, refinery. As you get more pieces of that same mineral, it'll build up further. Um, having 10 slots means you can be mining for 10 different minerals at the same time. Uh, that also helps you, because if you go out, say, for something expensive like low temperature diamonds, and um, when you're done you have, say, half of a bar of low temperature diamonds, and then you want to go out. Um, you want to go out again. You can keep that sitting in your refinery until the next time you fly, and that's a good idea because you've got half of a, basically halfway to having a full chunk of 
a, a fairly valuable mineral there. Um, looking down the next two, very important. Um, I have this, that's your uh, collector limpet. This is a collector limpet controller. This is a device that's going to help you collect things, uh, collect pieces of, of uh, mineral ore more easily. If you don't have one of these, you're going to have to open your cargo bay and go pick them up manually, which is tedious and can take a lot of time. Limpet controller will let you launch a limpet, which is a small drone that will go out, grab, that, grab those pieces of minerals and bring them back into your cargo hold for you. You should really try and get the biggest collector limpet controller that you can. This 1A size controller, it can only control one limpet at a time, which means it's going to be a little bit slower picking them up. The bigger ones, like I have on my other mining ship that we'll take a look at later, um, can do more. Um, so it can collect things faster. Um, this isn't optimal, but it's good enough for what we're going to do here today. Uh, again, I mostly use this ship just for doing demos, which is what I really made it for. Um, I did a couple of demo videos a while back, so I didn't really max it out. The next item I have is a Prospector Olympic controller. This is an important one, but it doesn't have to be... Uh, 1A Prospector Olympic controller is pretty much good enough for almost any mining you're going to do. You really only need one Prospector Olympic at a time. What you'll do with this is this is the... This kind of limpet, you'll fire at an asteroid. What it'll do is it'll the limpet drone will attach itself to an asteroid and it will tell you what the composition of that asteroid is so you know if it's worth mining or not. Um, and like I said, you really only need one of them at a time. So this 1A controller is good enough. It can have one active limpet at a time. Um, the difference between the different size ones, I think larger ones will let you have multiple limpets active at a time and it's it's almost a waste because you'll never look at the the older ones that you've already looked at and passed um, the difference is is the range at which they stay active and things like that um, it, again if you want to save on space you can go with a smaller prospector limpet and you probably want to go with the biggest collector limpet controller that you have and um the next couple of items I have are kind of st almost standard equipment. I've got a small fuel scoop so I don't run out of gas. Detailed surface scanner. This is important to have because you're going to use this device to reveal concentrations of minerals within a ring system. It's going to help you find the really good stuff. Um, super cruise assist just because I'm lazy and autopilot helps, especially when I'm trying to talk. Planetary approach suite just because we've got a horizons and that comes automatically with the ship so you will notice in my optional internals i don't have shields uh, that's again space is kind of a premium on the cobra so i kind of had to choose between a fuel scoop and a shield and ultimately the station that i built this at didn't have size two shields for a cobra so uh, i went with a fuel scoop you can mine just fine without shields um, you have to be careful about a few things that we'll get into, um, especially as your limpets are bringing in cargo. You kind of want to be staying still because if you're moving around a little bit, they tend to knock into your hull as they come in and you'll gradually start to take hull damage over time. And uh, that can get problematic. It's not The repairs aren't very expensive, but um, if you don't pay attention, you could accidentally cause yourself some problems. So again, um, here are the really important equipment, cargo, you want as much cargo space as you can cram into your ship and has still have all your other equipment. Refinery is what converts your minerals into the actual commodities you can sell that you'll store in your cargo racks. You want the biggest collector limpet controller you have. You want a prospector limpet, not as important for it to be big. You want a detailed surface scanner. Rest of the stuff is optional. So again, a uh, fuel scoop is is nice to have. Shields would be really nice to have. Um, and you'll see my larger sh mining ships, I always put shields on them. And that's about it for internals. Next piece of, piece of equipment we'll look at, <coughs> excuse me, is our utility mounts. And then we'll look at the actual mining tools on our hard points. 
So if you look at our utility mounts, I've only got two utility slots on this on this ship, but these are the ones you want to have. First one, I've got a point defense turret. This is good to have just because you may have to deal with piracy, and pirates like to throw hatch li breaker limpets at you. What those limpets, those are limpet drones, they'll go and attach themselves to your cargo bay door, your cargo hatch, pry it open and steal cargo from you. Point defense turrets are really good at picking them off, and um, if you can mount it on the bottom of your ship so that it's close to your cargo hatch, even better. And, um, well, both the, on the Cobra, both the utility mounts are on the bottom of the ship, so it doesn't matter which slot it's in. So this is a good position to have. Uh, one is one usually does the job, two does the job even better. Um, again, with the Cobra, I don't have that many slots to deal with. The next one, this is a very important piece of equipment for certain types of mining. If you want to use the more advanced mining options for um, surface mining, subsurface mining, and deep core mining, you absolutely need this tool. This is a scanner. What it will do is it will reveal asteroids that have more valuable mineral deposits. Um, you'll be able to ping away with this and you'll see the, the um, asteroids that may contain the more valuable stuff will actually have a glow that will show up in your screen. Um, very important to have. Doesn't matter where on your ship you mount it, but you want to have one. If you're going to just do basic laser mining, you'll see what that is when we get out flying. Uh, you don't really need this, but if you're going to do any other type of mining, you're going to want to have one of these. So let's look at the fun stuff. This is We'll look at our hard points. This is this is our actual mining tools. This is your basic mining laser. Um, this is the original what you used for the original style of mining back um, when it was the only kind of mining you could do. Uh, your prospector Olympid will tell you what the asteroid's made of. You fire this mining laser at the asteroid, and it'll just knock off pieces um, that randomly will have randomly will contain one of the elements that the uh, asteroid's composed of. Um, it's time consuming, but it gets the job done. Um, certain types of certain types of valuables do show up in this type of mining. Um, so it's good to have, even if it's not the most profitable. It's also the best way to collect materials that you'll use for engineering from asteroid fields um, the raw type materials this is the only way you'll get it you'll get it is as you're mining you'll get whatever elements the uh, asteroid is composed of and a certain number of those those chunks will come out as materials as well those you can collect and hang on to and when you get up to using engineers and want to upgrade your equipment uh, you'll find that you'll need that stuff um, and engineering, uh, well, materials are also useful for for synthesizing components on the fly, uh, especially if you're mining a lot, you may run out of limpets. You can actually make more limpets if you have the right materials. So uh, this is almost a must-have. The next tool we're going to talk about is the abrasion blaster. This is used actually in two types of mining. Um, if you find those special asteroids that glow when you hit them with your pulse wave scanner, uh, they may have surface deposits. This is the tool that will break those surface deposits off. It's basically a type of cannon. You shoot it at the uh, you shoot it at the surface deposit. It knocks it loose. It's a bigger chunk than you'll get with a mining laser, um, with more of a mineral, uh, and. Um, there's not much else to say about it. The other type of mining that you use this for when you go deep core mining, the deep the uh, tool you use for the deep core mining will actually crack open asteroids and uh, reveal a whole lot of material. Some of it will be floating in space already, ready for you to pick up with your Olympic controller. Some of it, the rest of it will be new surface uh, surface deposits that get exposed. Do use your abrasion blaster to collect those. That may sound confusing now. You'll see when we get to that point once we start flying. The next tool is our subsurface displacement missile. 
you'll use this to mine subsurface deposits if you want. Um, this is probably one of the more complicated ones to use. Basically, this shoots little missiles that also have a basically have a drill on the nose. You'll hit the uh, subsurface deposit, hold your trigger down, and it'll drill into the deposit. Um, you'll have a little display where you can see where the actual minerals are um, as it drills in, and you'll release when it gets to a chunk of min minerals, and then the missile will detonate and blow that chunk back out. And again, this is a large size chunk like the abrasion blaster will knock off, which is generally more valuable than what the mining laser will be able to give you. Again, this sounds confusing now. You'll see what I mean when we get to using it. The last one is the big one. This is the seismic charge launcher. This is the most fun. Um, for This is what you use for deep core mining, or one of the two tools you use for deep core mining. So when you find an asteroid that has um, deep core deposits, what you'll do is you'll look for fissures on that asteroid, and you'll fire a number of these seismic charges at those fissures until you build up enough of them to crack open the asteroid. You'll detonate those charges. It will explode the whole asteroid, crack it into a bunch of pieces. It will release a bunch of large chunks of or that you can pick up with your limpet controller with your collector limpets and it will also reveal a good number of surface of other surface deposits that you can collect with your abrasion blaster again that's complicated but but it's the most profitable way to mine you'll get the most out of an asteroid it takes longer to find those asteroids but they're definitely worth it and they usually have the most expensive, uh, the most valuable minerals are what you'll find this way. So again, you'll note that I don't have shields on this Cobra. That's okay, you can mine without shields. If you can mount shields, that's definitely a good thing too. So now, one thing that I have to stress you do want to carry limpets and you have to buy limpets they take up space in your hold but you don't buy them from the commodities market it's kind of buried in the menus a little bit once you know where it is you won't forget it the worst thing you can do is take off in your ship find an asteroid field find um, a low temperature diamond hotspot or a void opal hotspot or something really valuable get there dodge a couple of space pirates along the way find the uh, you know get into a get into an asteroid field go to fire a prospector limpet and realize that you forgot to buy your limpets <coughs> excuse me hold on one second <clears throat> so you got to make sure that you stock up on limpets before you go out mining to do that, we're going to go over here to Advanced Maintenance. We're going to go to the Restock menu. And if you look here, you'll have your ammo for your various tools or and weapons. And down here you'll see Limpet Control. Now your limpets are generic. You don't have separate limpets for your prospector, separate limpets for your collector. They all come out of one pool of limpets. And uh, you can see I've got 0 of 32 right now. The limpets are fairly cheap. They cost 101 credits each. And uh, that's, you know, almost nothing. It may seem like a lot if you're, if you're new to the game, but that you'll, you'll quickly find out that that's really low price. Um, you want to carry at least three quarters of your cargo with limpets, maybe even more. Um, you may find that you have to dump a few limpets uh, if, you, if you're doing really well um, which isn't a problem because compared to the value of the of the minerals you're going to be collecting uh, limpets really are insignificant cost <coughs> excuse me so uh, since we've got such a small cargo hold I'm going to load up with a full load of limpets by the time I find stuff that I'm going to actually I'll leave a little bit of space I'll go with 25 limpets 
So I'm pretty sure I've got enough materials to make more if I need to. Uh, by the time we find something that I'm going to want to mine, we'll, we'll probably have used up a few of these. I'm go with a, yeah, I'll go with about 25 out of 32. Um, if I knew I was going to go, uh, only because I'm going to do some laser mining first. So I'll probably have a couple of tons of, I'll need a couple of, uh, fill up a couple of space before I use a lot of limpets. If I know I was going to go strictly deep core mining, it takes a while to find those deep core asteroids, and I know I'd burn through a lot of limpets before I get there. So we'll start with 25 limpets now. Um, again, about cargo holds, um, you'll see the ship that I usually use for mining has a hold of about 128, and um, I, I go out with at least 100 limpets in that thing. Sometimes I'll just go out with completely fully packed. Um, and I'll stay out longer. Uh, again, this Cobra, you know, we're, it's going to be, it's going to be a short trip. Um, but I want you to see what a difference going from a small cargo hold to a large cargo hold makes. So we'll do, we'll go out, we'll start, um, now that we've got our limpets, we'll go out, we'll start mining. When I fill up the ship, we'll come back and I'll switch ships to my larger miner. Okay, so we've got our limpets. And uh, while I'm here, there's a couple more things we're going to go over before we go out and fly. Take a look at our inventory, our ship cargo. We've got our 25 limpets. It tells you what the average price is. That's fine. We go down one. This is our refinery. And uh, you see this is all the stuff that was left over in here from the last time that I was mining. Um, it's all a mixed bag of stuff. Some of this stuff is kind of valuable, so, or moderately valuable, but I'm going to clean out some of it right now. And you can clean it out by clicking on the little arrow on the right next to it. So anything, I, I don't have anything crazy valuable. Like if I had low temperature diamonds in here, I'd leave them and just uh, build on top of it, but I want to have some plenty of room. I will leave the painite because that's a little uh, that that can be a little tough to come by sometimes but I'll be mostly empty. So you see I have remember I had 10 slots so I've got nine empty slots and one that's partially occupied. Um, and like I said, most of the time you'll end up going out mining for the same things. Um, so you'll want to probably keep the keep the old stuff and build on top of it. Uh, you'll figure out what you want to mine for. Most people want to mine for low temperature diamonds since that's currently the most valuable resource out there. Tritium is also another valuable one. Um, it doesn't get nearly as much, uh, it won't profit you nearly as much, but it's in high demand because it's used as fuel for fleet carriers. Um, void opals are still pretty good, they're not as uh, valuable as they used to be. A and um, the rest you'll learn as you go. You'll, you'll f start to figure out what the really valuable stuff is and what's almost not even worth your time pretty quickly once you get into it. So the other thing I want to show you over here is your fire group setup. Um, this is kind of important to understand because it can get a little complicated, especially when you have all these different mining tools on. So if we look, my A group, um, this one I almost always set up as my, uh, basically as my exploring fire group. I'll have my discovery scanner and my detailed surface scanner. Now if we were... <coughs> Excuse me. If we are prospecting in a new system that I've never been before, I'll want to hit it with my discovery scanner um, to scan the system, see where everything is. And um, when you're prospecting, when you find a ring system that you want to try and mine, you're going to want to hit it with a detailed surface scanner. So my first fire group is always discovery scanner on trigger one, detailed surface scanner on trigger two. My second firing group for a miner, I, I always do this. This is um, the fire group that I sit in when I'm looking for asteroids to mine. So I have my prospector limpet 
on my first trigger and then I have my pulse wave analyzer on my second tr trigger so what I'll end up doing especially if I'm looking for deep core asteroids I'll cruise through the asteroid s field or, or the ring and I'll just be pinging away with my pulse wave analyzer and when I see one that looks good I'll fire prospector limp limpet at it now the next four fire groups is where I have my um, various mining tools in each case I've got my collector limpets on my on my number two trigger and I've got my various mining tools on the number one trigger excuse me one second sorry about that I had to get a drink of water um, so here in this one I've got my mining laser on trigger one a collector limpet on trigger two when I'm actually mining my minerals yeah I'm going to be using my mining tool and I'm going to want to be able to launch collector limpets as I go so then here we've got collector limpet and my abrasion blaster collector limpet and displacement missile collector limpet and seismic charge now my last fire group I've got you know the the other the other devices that I don't use as much um, that I don't have in any other fire group and that's my composition scanner and data link scanner won't really be probably won't use them at all while I'm mining um, you may use them during if you're doing certain types of exploration um, I just like to have them in a fire group just so I can feel like I've got access to everything but again the, the big things to recommend um, your discovery scanners in one group your prospecting tools, that's your prospector limpet and your pulse wave analyzer in another fire group. And then a fire group for each mining tool you have. Um, one trigger has collector limpet, one trigger has the tool. And um, you may not want to configure a miner with all four mining tools, that's okay. You know, configure what you plan on using. Um, you can either swap them out for what you need or. Um, or just change your loadout completely. Um, if you can do all four on a dedicated mining ship, great. Then you never have to change it. Uh, but again, I suggest grouping one mining tool and the collector limpets together in fire groups. And as we go, you'll see that works pretty well. So that said, we've got our limpets. We've checked our fire groups. We've checked our refinery and our inventory. <clears throat> now let's check our system map now I've already been mining in this system so I kind of know what's here and we'll take a look so there's a couple of different places you can mine you can mine in these asteroid belts so if we uh, highlight the asteroid belt and go to our second tab up here you'll see it's major reserves it says ring type rocky uh, you'll you'll get to know what types of minerals are in what types of rings as you go. Um, asteroid belts like this tend to be very sparse. Uh, there'll be a bunch of different asteroid clusters that only have a few asteroids each. Um, it's not the most efficient place to mine. Um, you may be able to find good stuff there. Um, more often than not, you won't. Uh, the ring systems are much easier because there's much more asteroids to pick from there um, rocky type doesn't tend to have a lot of a lot of the expensive stuff um, but the important thing to see here is at the very top of uh, the description it says major reserves the reserve type will determine how frequently you find good stuff and um, how much you get out of each chunk that you mine the best the best reserves to look for are what's called pristine reserves you're probably not going to find that anywhere in the actual bubble around around earth um, when you get out into other regions of the galaxy almost everything will be pristine reserves those are the best places to mine so if um, you want to do long-range mining if your miner has a decent jump range and you don't mind being away from civilization go for it 
if you're going to mining within the bubble, major reserves is probably the best you're going to find. Um, that's good enough. You'll, you can do more profit from pristine in a shorter time, but major reserves you can do pretty well, and you're probably in a system, you know, if, especially if you're in a system close to some place where you can sell your stuff for best profit. If we look over here at this gas giant, see it's got two ring systems. If we look down here at the description, at the bottom part of the description, the inner ring is a rocky ring. The outer ring is an icy ring. If we look at the top, we see we've got major reserves again. So this is about as good as you get. Um, again, it's the two types of rings. It's a rocky ring and an icy ring. The other types of rings you'll find that are good are... Um, <clears throat> metal rich and metallic rings so the places where you're usually going to find the best stuff is icy rings and metallic rings those will usually have the best concentrations um, metal rich and rocky yeah you can still get good stuff there but the best stuff is in icy and metallic so now icy rings is where the really high priced stuff is that's where you find your low temperature diamonds and your void opals so if you really want to go for maximum profits that's the place to go you can find some fairly you know some fairly profitable stuff in your metallic and rocky rings too but the best stuff currently on the market is in going to be in icy rings um, I happen to know that there at least last time I had scanned it there was um, there's a void opal, uh, not a void opal, the void opal and a low temperature diamonds hotspot in this icy ring. Um, that may have changed since the last reset, but we're going to go over and check it out anyway. So, what we'll do, we'll go here, we'll mark this, we'll mark this gas giant as our target. We'll go out of the station, go over, scan the rings, and see what we've got. Okay, so after all that, we're ready to launch, so we're just going to go for it. And again, remember this Cobra does not have shields, so I kind of have to be careful to not bump things. And if you're a new player, that might be a little scary. If you've done this a few times, no problem. Regulate speed until clear of exclusion zone. Give me a second. I gotta turn down. Check my headphones a little bit. I've got them up a little too loud. There we go. Now, if you notice my power distributor indicator in the bottom right, I've got full pips to engines right now because I'm traveling. Two pips to weapons, nothing to, to shields because, well, I don't have shields. <laughs> All right, so our gas giant that we're heading to, well, it's on the other side of, well, I've got this planet that I'm close to in orbit around is uh, blocking it so we're going to go to super cruise and get around it Four, three, two, one, so once I get clear enough that I can see my target I'll turn on super cruise assist and head for it there we go that's our target system that we marked when we were on the, the uh, system map. Let's go find the target here on our navigation pane. Turn on super cruise assists. Actually, let me see. Yeah. Turn on super cruise assist and head out for it. Let's see, I think it's been reset since the last time I scanned these rings, so we'll get to see what it looks like to hit it with our discovery scanner. 
and reveal the new places where the hot spots are. I'm hoping we still have low temperature diamonds hot spot or void, void opal hot spot, but um, you know, we'll go with what we can. You notice right now my cockpit is in combat mode, and you notice my discovery scanner and my surface scanner are uh, are um, shown in red, meaning they're not active in this mode. So we're going to switch to analysis mode. This is where you spend basically all your time <laughs> while mining, anyway. So let's close in again. The super cruise assist. I can take my hands off, and uh, which is good for me while I'm doing this because uh, I have this bad habit of talking with my hands, and so it's a little bit easier for me to talk when I'm done with my hands on the stick. <clears throat> All right, so we're coming up. I'm actually going to turn super cruise assist off at this point. Oh, there's a hot spot there. All right, my hotspots are still revealed, so this didn't get reset. So what I'm going to do is, you can see we're already, you can see the hotspots are marked on the ring. I'm going to, um, if this was a planet that you've never been to before, those hotspots would not be revealed. So I'm going to show you how you reveal those. So we're going to go closer to this planet until my surface scanner on the lower left says I'm in range. You see it's switched too fast, so if I slow down, come to a halt, surface scanner will go blue. So what you so you can see the hot spots are already revealed. The hot spots are where you have a high concentration of minerals, and the name of the hot spot will even tell you what what's there. You can see I'm I, I'm showing you some of them in the um, in the inner ring, in the outer ring we've got low temperature diamonds and tritium right next to each other. So that's where we're going to go. So um, let's go in here. I'm going to hit my number two trigger, switch to detailed surface scanner mode. So what we're going to do to hit this inner, I'm going to want to put one probe in each ring. Uh, we're going to pretend that the hot spots aren't revealed. I'm going to just kind of edge out until it says ring. Fire one off. The probe will hit the ring. Well, <laughs> it didn't do it this time because I think I've already, I think I may have just missed the edge of the ring there. Oh, come on. Let me come up a little more. I know that one hit. All right. It's, it's not showing you the uh, scan animation because it's already scanned. So I, I know I hit the middle ring that time. And uh, let's do one in the outer ring, even though it's not going to play the animation. You hit it with your probe, it'll reveal the hot spots first time you come in. You'll see it, we can back out. Now, if you look on your navigation pane, you'll see your hot spots are revealed. You know, the two hottest um, commodities right now that you'll find in icy rings low temperature diamonds and tritium. Um, they're right there in a nice hot spot. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, some of these others are in the in the rocky ring. Um, I forget off the top of my head what the prices are. Some of these may be fairly expensive. Um, you can find it's easy to find minerals that are worth somewhere around two hundred fifty thousand per ton. Um, but those are not the best. Low temperature diamonds, if you find the right place to sell them, can go for a million to a million and a half per ton. So that's really the one you want if you want to make money. If you want to get resources to uh, fill up the fuel tank on a fleet carrier, whether it's yours or somebody else's, or if you want to sell it to somebody with a fleet carrier who needs it, um, you'd go for tritium. And, um, you know, uh, you can make money off of any of these. It's just a matter of how much. I'm going to go right for the low temperature diamonds hotspot. I'm going to lock on to it and go super cruise assist on. Because that will drop us out of super cruise. All right, when we need to, it's not letting me lock on to it very well. That's okay. We can go in manually. 
sometimes Super Cruise Assist has trouble locking onto these when you're too close. Um, you will find the best stuff. Actually, I'm going to slow down for a second here. One thing I want to point out. Uh, you can find the best concentration of the minerals you want closer to the center of the hot spot. So I'm going to try and drop near the middle. Um, and as we, as we mine, I'll work my way towards the center. Uh, if you get two hot spots of the same type that are overlapping, the place where they overlap usually will get a big boost. There's a couple of rare spots in the game where you will find three, three hot spots overlapping. Those are the best places to mine. Um, they did nerf that slightly for low temperature diamonds because people were, were finding the triple low temperature diamond spots and just mobbing them. <laughs> but um, I don't have a, I don't have an overlapping hot spot. I just have a single hot spot here, so we'll make do with what we've got. And you know, if you find those spots, uh, if you look around places like Reddit or the the Elite Dangerous forums, you'll you'll find where those places are very quickly because people people keep going on about it. The problem is if you go to those popular spots is lots of people, not just NPCs but players will be hanging around to um, to jump you and take your cargo. Uh, usually players will ask you to drop some of your cargo and um, if you don't then they'll start shooting at you or uh, they'll throw hatchbreaker limpets at you and just take it anyway. Uh, NPCs will try to jump you and uh, well you can try to fight well this Cobra is completely unarmed so <laughs> I don't have much and no shield so I don't have much chance of, of fighting them off so I'd have to run uh, my other mining ship I do carry a, a turreted weapon and it's got shields and it's uh, fairly decent so it, it doesn't have a lot of firepower but it can handle itself a little bit better so we're going to drop in relatively close to the center of the hot spot. The color really doesn't matter, but I'm going to go for the yellow spots anyway. Let's drop out. And we'll actually dive into the ring itself. You got to watch your scope because you see that contact there. Uh, there will tend to be NPCs who want to do pirating there. I'm just going to you know, keep boosting until I get away from this guy. He's probably going to scan me, but I've got nothing in my cargo hold right now, so it's not a big deal. Uh, some other contacts, too. They're pretty distant. I'm going to try and make sure I lose contact with these guys before I really start mining. Just a good practice. Okay, we're dropped into the asteroid field. They get a little more distance and we'll start doing our thing. Meanwhile, let me shift um, to my prospector. So this is my second fire group where I have my prospectors set up. Who is this guy? Alright, he's out of range anyway. where I have my pulse wave scanner and my prospector limits. So, um, let me show you how the pulse wave scanner works. So, first of all, um, if I ping with the pulse wave scanner, you'll see it'll go out, it'll scan. You see that, that rock is lit up. That rock has some of the special types. You'll have surface, uh, subsurface or core deposits on it because it's that special color. Um, after you get some experience using it, the brighter they are, the better the deposits. There's another one up there. The brighter they are, the better the deposits. These are not particularly bright, so those are kind of so-so deposits. There's a bunch of contacts back there. I'm just going to get a little distance. I really don't want trouble. Um, ones that glow really brightly 
are the best ones and uh, most likely to be core asteroids. Um, core asteroids are going to be few and far between. They're always going to be the brightest thing that you can find on your pulse wave scanner. They're usually a particular shape for an asteroid field, and you just kind of have to get a feel for it. I have noticed that, um, you know, several months ago before the last mining update, it was actually easier to pick them out, and now it's a little harder to tell the difference. Uh, one other trick while I'm getting some distance, if you go over to your ship tab, you turn on night vision. This actually helps, especially if the ring you're in is in shadow and it can be hard to see. This helps you see where the uh, asteroids are, especially distance ones. And uh, it becomes a little bit easier to read the asteroid, the results of the pulse wave scanner. So now if I'm really looking for um, core asteroids, I'll just sit here, I'll cruise through this, uh, I'll keep cruising through this asteroid field and pinging away with my pulse wave scanner until I see a really good one. Um, hang on one second. Alright, so now that I've almost got my scope clear of contacts, um, like I said, I'm just going to try and get away from this last guy. flying a python, so if he comes after me, it's going to be kind of tough. I'm just being a little extra paranoid. I think he's turning the other way, so... There we go, he's off the scanner now. Uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to do some standard laser mining. Um, I don't really need the pulse wave scanner for this. Uh, I keep hitting it after uh, a couple of times just for just out of habit. So what we'll do is we'll pick an asteroid. This one, uh, you can pick basically any asteroid. You'll be able to laser mine literally any asteroid you see out here. I'm going to pick one. I'm going to fire a prospect eliminate at it. And we can target our prospect limpet. It'll hit the asteroid and watch our display on the lower left. Prospect limpet engaged. So you can see uh, it'll tell asteroid you minerals scan complete. Asteroid scan complete. Um, that pane there on the bottom left tells you um, there's 100% minerals remaining. It's got liquid oxygen, hydrogen peroxide, methane, clathrate, and material content low. This is not a very valuable asteroid. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to move on try to find something a little bit better. Python's still... Uh, Still dogging me. good spot to stay because there's some interesting looking asteroids. Again, we'll target our Prospector Limpet. Prospector Limpet engaged. Hmm. Asteroid scan complete. This will do. Um, most of the stuff in this asteroid, I've got, it, this asteroid has lithium hydroxide and methanol monohydrate crystals. Methanol monohydrate cl crystals are worth the moderate amount. You'll see them come up a lot on, on um, if you take missions for mining. Um, it says low materials. Again, if you were mining to look for engineering materials, this asteroid has a low content. Um, you know, that's not that important right now, though. 
So what we're going to do if we want to laser mine this asteroid, um, this has this. You'll notice this asteroid has no special targets, so there's no subsurface deposits, surface deposits, and it's not a deep core asteroid. So laser mining is our only option for this asteroid. Um, I'm going to mine for methanol mine hydrate crystals just because that's uh, the most valuable thing it's got. The lithium hydroxide isn't all that valuable, um, but I can show you another feature. Um, the chunks that I knock off this will have one or both of those elements in it. I'm going to show you how you can distinguish between the two. So we're going to switch our fire group to the one with our mining laser. You notice that it's out of range right now, so I'm going to pull up a little closer to this asteroid until my mining laser shows that I'm in range and be a little cautious because it's going to feel like you're really close. So this is close enough. <clears throat> I'm not going to launch my collector limpet just yet because there's going to be something I'm going to show you, but before you start mining, you're going to want to open your cargo scoop. Because if you try to collect up stuff in your cargo scoops closed, your collector limpets will kind of freak out. So we've got our mining laser selected. I'm just going to hold, I'm going to actually um, go full pips to weapon so that I can fire it continuously. And uh, we're going to drill into this asteroid. And uh, after a few chunks get knocked off, we'll sh take a look at the uh, contacts pane and take a look. So there we go. Some stuff is starting to come out of this asteroid and showing up on the scanner. Now those chunks <clears throat> have a limited lifespan. Basically they'll have a hole value and if you actually select one of them on the contacts list you'll see they're slowly decreasing. So you have a limited time to pick them up. Let's go over here to our contacts menu. Contact menu. Uh, when you start out it will look like this. So you notice <clears throat> Um, I did a trick. I, I turned off something that I'm going to show you. If I select one of these fragments, you see it's got a little bit of both minerals in it. <clears throat> now let's say we know the methanol monohydrate crystal is the one that we want. Lithium hydroxide we don't want because it's not valuable enough. What you can do is you can come over here and you can click on this add lithium hydroxide to ignore list. So what happens is now when it picks up this this rock it will only process, it won't process the lithium hydroxide, but it will process the other one. And um, if there's rocks, fragments out there that only have lithium hydroxide that we added to our ignore list, it'll completely ignore them. Um, I've done a lot of mining, so, um, so, um, <clears throat> So I have um, basically all the minerals that are that are not particularly valuable I have on my ignore list unless I was specifically going after them for some some reason. So now while these um, so these minerals are starting to run out of time, so I'm going to launch my collector limpet again. If I had a better limpet controller, I could launch two or three of these. I only have one right now, but that's enough to show you what's going on. So I'm going to go launch my limpet drone. You'll see it pop up on the scanner. It's going to go out, grab a rock, and actually you can see it there going on. I'm going to try and stay still as it comes in. It's going to swing around to my ship, put it in my hold, and go get another one. Now you notice I don't have any rocks targeted. When you, If you don't have anything targeted, Except your, you can target your prospect limpet, limpet, but if you don't have any of the fragments targeted, your limpet drone will just keep going back and forth and collecting them. Uh, so while it's doing that, let's look at our inventory on our refinery. And you see it's slowly building up methanol monohydrate crystals. When this bar gets filled completely, <clears throat> you'll get a ton of that resource will show up in your regular inventory. So let's go knock off, uh, knock off a couple of more pieces. My limpet drone will start to go get them. And 
and I'm going to show you something interesting here. I'm going to go into my contacts list. I'm going to select, target one of the fragments. Watch what my limpet drone does if I have a fragment targeted. It'll go pick up the one that I targeted specifically. Bring it in. Okay, it didn't do it that time. Interesting. Normally, if you have a fragment targeted, when you launch your limpet drone, it will pick up that one thing and then expire. I guess because I didn't target it when I launched the limpet. Um, so what I normally do when I'm laser mining, and here we'll just mine out the rest of this. When I'm laser mining is I'll stay targeted on the prospector limpet as I knock this stuff off and just let my collector limpet do its job until it runs out of time and, and fuel and expires. You'll notice in the bottom left the minerals remaining is slowly dropping. Um, if I had <clears throat> more than one mining laser on this thing, uh, that would drop be dropping faster because I'd be able to mine a little faster, but I have one mining laser. One mining laser is usually enough. Um, if you're going to do a lot of laser mining like this, you're going to want two mining lasers. This is the longest and boring, most boring way to mine, um, so we're really only just going to do this one asteroid. So now that I've got a bunch of, uh, let me get a bunch of uh, fragments in the air, and then we'll take a look at our refinery and watch how that does what happens as they're coming in. So you see as the fragments are coming in, it's slowly filling up this bar. Again, higher quality um, higher quality hotspots or uh, uh, rings with higher reserves, this will fill up faster. Um, laser mining, the fragments that it knocks off are small fragments, so you see it, it only moves the bar a little bit. Uh, the fragments that will knock off to the other types of mining will be bigger and will fill up the bar much faster. That's why they're much more profitable. Let's come here in here. Let's get at least one of these. Let's get at least a ton of these. So we're about 60% of a uh, of a unit. I'm just going to keep lasering this asteroid away. Um, this is the way mining was originally. This is the original mining tool. You basically sit here holding down the trigger for long periods of time while your Olympic controller goes up. Oh, I collect your Olympic. Okay, there it is. It's still going. I thought I thought I lost my collector limpet. Um, one thing with collector limpets, especially if you're mining an asteroid that's spinning quickly, sometimes the collector limpet will get smacked by the asteroid and it'll die out on its own. Often it won't. And you can see that um, having one limpet, it takes a while to haul this stuff in. Um, Again, that's why I said if you can fit it in your ship, fit in the largest collector limpet controller you can. You'll see when I switch to my other ship and I can launch multiple limpets, uh, collector limpets, that it goes much faster. Um, again, we're going to do a short run with this ship, so uh, I'm going to laser this one asteroid and then we'll go looking for other targets. So it won't be as, uh, as tedious. Let's see, we're almost, we've almost got one unit of methanol monohydrate crystals, and there's about 31% minerals remaining in this asteroid, so I'll we'll keep drilling. So as long as you've got that prospector limpet that you attach to this asteroid targeted, you can see the stats. And you'll see in another half minute when I finish lasering this asteroid, the minerals remaining goes down to zero. Um, I'll, you know, burn into the asteroid for a while, then I'll check my contacts just to break things up, or I'll check my, um, I'll check my refinery. Um, so you see a lot of these fragments are the same stuff we've been getting. Oops, I'm moving my ship around too much. 
you'll see down here you've got two chunks that are materials these are materials that you'll use for either um, synthesizing more supplies or you use them as parts for um, for engineering materials don't take up any space in your hull you can hold up to whatever the maximum is for any one given material um, it's never a big this laser mining is the only way you can get raw materials uh, raw type materials like iron or sulfur uh, and other minerals type materials like that um, for engineering so you're always going to have to do some sort of laser mining at some point even if the only thing you're looking for is materials let me get back to um, oops let me get back to finishing let me finish drilling out this asteroid if I get enough to actually refine fully refine a material or fully refine a commodity out of this should give me a nice little warning um, if you want to speed things up a little, you should pay attention to where the um, where the fragments are. If you position your ship just kind of just over them, so that the bottom of your ship is there. We go. That's everything I'm going to get out of this asteroid. If you position yourself over where most of the fragments are, are the collector limpet can work a little bit faster because uh, basically then these fragments are going to be right above where your cargo bay is. It'll take a little less travel time for your limpets to go. Let's take a look at our refinery, see what's going up. We did get uh, we did get one methanol monohydrate crystal and again 2000 that's this is actually a very low value target. I normally wouldn't even mine for it. We're doing this for demonstration purposes. If we went around long enough, we could probably find asteroids that will have um, that will have low temperature diamonds or tritium or other value, really valuable stuff that we can laser mine. Okay, so with that done, we're gonna go in search of better targets. You note that even if I close my cargo scoop that limpet on my scope will follow me around until its timer runs out. So let's go back to our prospecting fire group. Ping away with our pulse wave analyzer. I'm going to try and find some surface and subsurface deposits. And again, one of the reasons I picked this spot was because I saw there was a couple of other asteroids right nearby that were glowing. Remember, glowing means there's, there's things that you can get with the tools other than the laser mining tool. So let's get lined up on that. Let's hit it with a prospector limpet. You'll notice that my previous prospector limpet blinked out of existence when I launched this one. That's because my limpet controller only allows me one at a time. And that's fine. So this, um, this asteroid, you can see it's got... You can see it's got liquid oxygen and water. Those are not very valuable minerals at all. I probably wouldn't bother mining them at all. If we look at the targets, that's a, what a subsurface target looks like. Um, it's got water. That's what a surface target looks like. And wow, that's low temperature diamonds. So we're definitely going to go after this one. So let's see, if we look here, you can see our targets if you look here on our contacts list, you can see there's a low temperature diamond surface deposit here, another surface deposit here, and two subsurface water deposits. Again, these low temperature diamonds, this is very valuable. I'm probably not going to get enough to, to, um, to, um, to actually um, fill an entire bar of these, but we should get something. So um, these are surface deposits. I've got one of them targeted now. You can see it's on the other side of the asteroid, and this is why I said you need good thrusters because we're going to have to maneuver around a little bit. So we're going to go with our firing groups. 
So we're going to select our abrasion blaster. I'm out of range right now. We're going to slip around to the side, slip around to the other side of this asteroid. You're going to want to use your lateral thrusters and your vertical thrusters a lot to get position on these, especially if the asteroid's spinning. So those are low temperature diamonds. The circle tells you the spot to aim at. It's usually best if you just stop. So um, I'm going to shoot this thing. It's going to knock off a big chunk, and then my limpet's going to go out and grab it because I already have a collector limpet in the air. So you hold down the trigger till it fires. There goes a nice sized chunk. Limpet has seen it, and it's grabbing it. This is going to be a bigger chunk, so it's going to fill up a little bit faster. Collector limpet expired. Oh, I ran out of time. Okay. So um, you saw my collector limpet expired. It ran out of time, so I'm going to fire off another I'm collector limpet. limpet the collector limpets only last so long. When their time runs out, they go away. Um, the larger, better quality collector limpet controllers, you'll get more time out of them. So let's see. All right, it's coming on in. So we're going to take a look at our uh, inventory for the refinery. I'm going to watch what happens as this comes in. Notice I'm keeping the ship still. These larger chunks that you get from surface mining. Uh-oh. Good lesson here. I just wasted... Wasted some time because I forgot to open my cargo scoop. Cargo scoop deployed. There we go. So um, you see that big chunk is more than half of a bar of low temperature diamonds. That's why this type of mining is very lucrative. And low temperature diamonds is the most valuable resource in the game. So um, this is good here. So I'm going to select the other surface deposit. So we've got another low temperature diamond surface deposit. It's on the other side of the asteroid. <clears throat> this should be enough that I get one unit of low temperature diamonds. And again, this is surface mining using the abrasion blaster. I'm going to use our vertical and lateral thrust until we get a good view on it. The little circle tells us where to aim the abrasion blaster when you sort of get on it it'll the reticle kind of lock on and there we go my limpet should spot in any second now good words of the wise don't forget to open your cargo scoop <laughs> so let's see what happens Okay, we got more than 100% of low temperature diamonds, enough to get a little bit of a little bit of a bar on another one. So uh, I'm going to go back up to the inventory for my cargo hold. Here I've got a ton of low temperature diamonds. It says the galactic average is 57,000. Yeah, that might be true, but you will easily find places if you look around a little places where you can sell that ton of low temperature diamonds for over a million credits um, you do have to look around them that's where that's the trade aspect of it um, you're going to want to look at a third party tool to find out the best places to sell these but um yeah that's the most valuable asset in the game i'm not going to bother with these um these other um subsurface deposits with water i see i already have water on my ignore list water is not worth much money at all so let's see i'm going to go back to our pulse wave analyzer and prospector i'm going to point myself back towards the center of the hot spot and start scanning again Let's see, some other asteroids there that may be good prospects. I'm going to try and find um, a subsurface deposit that's worth mining, because that's, um, that's actually the most interesting, and that's actually one of the more interesting ways to mine. I, I, I shouldn't say the most interesting, because that definitely is core, core mining 
is definitely the most interesting way to mine by far because you get a nice um, you get a nice satisfying explosion when you crack the asteroid open. Um, subsurface mining has some complexities to it too. It's um, a little unusual. A lot of people haven't done it. I've heard that uh, I haven't done it in a while, but I've heard that some of the um, some of the changes they've made have made it a little bit more lucrative than it used to be. Okay, so I'm going to fire a prospector at this. Get a little closer, see what this asteroid has. So we've got methanol, monohydrate, lithium hydroxide, bromelite. Bromelite's, bromelite's usually worth a little more than methanol monohydrate. Um, and the mother load would be if we saw some, if we saw some um, low temperature diamonds. This only has hydrogen peroxide. It is a subsurface deposit. Um, I think we'll mine it anyway just because. And hi to Brian Hinsman. Checking in on the chat. Uh, yeah, you got your dad into the game. That's great. That's great. I know uh, my son has been a little interested in this game, but he's a little too young to handle the controls. I've shown him a few things, and I've got him to do the. Um, oops, I've got him to do the. Um, some of the training missions with me. Um, I was seeing on one of the one of the Facebook groups of men, um, one of the other dads in that group, said that he got his uh, his son to basically be his co-pilot, um, and to the trained up to the point where if he has to run away and do something, his son can take over and play for him, which is kind of cool. So um, hydrogen peroxide is one of the worst is one of the cheapest. Um, least profitable things to mine but I'm gonna take it off my ignore list just so I can show you how this subsurface mining works um, so if we see um, that's the only hot spot on this um, on this asteroid so I'm gonna select it and you'll note this asteroid is spinning a bit so it's gonna be a little tricky to hit and uh, let's see, Brian, what'd you say? How do you switch fire groups? Um, that depends on how you're configured. I'm using a flight stick, so um, it's um, square button and one of the buttons on the back of my throttle. <laughs> um, you'd have to look in your um, you'd have to look in your um, controls to see what it's set for if you're. Uh, you're if you're using um, a PS4 controller or a keyboard and uh, I believe it will tell you if you go through some of the training missions um, I haven't seen the, uh, let's see I'm missing this there it is let's get lined up on this so I'm going to switch over to my displacement missile and get lined up on the hot side hot spot and I'm just going to hold down the trigger so it says deploying drill down here and you'll notice it's going showing my drill digging into the asteroid and there's chunks there and I just missed badly <laughs> so the trick is you hold the trigger down as it drills in and you have to release the trigger when the indicator is on one of the blue sections and then it'll blow that blue section of ore out I told you I haven't done this type of mining in a while, so I kind of whiffed that. When you get lined up again, you can see that you got to... This will uh, train you to get good with your lateral and vertical thrusters. Let's try this one more time. Okay. I'm going to just pop the first one I can. There it goes. And it throws out a flaming chunk of minerals. This is going to be hydrogen peroxide. Again, not the most valuable thing in the world, but it demonstrates the technique. Uh, 
and that was a good amount. Now if you notice that spot is still there, you can usually, um, I think it lets you get two chunks, maybe more now. So we're going to hit it again. And back. Just barely got it. I got two that time. And I think it's going to let me take another shot. I used to only, I think you used to only get two shots on it. Looks like that's changed a little bit. So I've got hydrogen peroxide is refined. If I look at my ship cargo, see how hydrogen peroxide, the average price is under a thousand. It's really not a mineral I'd normally be going for, but it demonstrates what I want to demonstrate. So let's take another shot. Let's drill in. I'm going to let it get pretty deep this time. And I missed. This is why a lot of people don't like subsurface mining because it's tricky. And you notice um, I ran out of shots. So um, I didn't do a very good job on that one. So I'm going to try and find another one. Go back to our prospector. And uh, Brian's asking what system I'm playing on. I'm actually playing on, on PlayStation 4. So if you're playing on PC, whatever I have set up for the controls isn't necessarily going to gonna make sense to you. Uh, let me go hit up this one. I'm going to go look for another subsurface deposit and see if I can do a better job than I just did. And then after that, I'll go see if I can find a core asteroid. Then we'll take this load and switch ships to my big mining ship. Let's see, I'm close enough I can prospect. So that prospector limpet failed. That was the prospector limpet on the asteroid that I just finished expiring. Again, this control, the limpet controller I have only lets me put out one prospector at a time. But like I've been saying, one is enough. One prospector limpet is enough. Prospector Let's see. Engaged. This one's got a bunch of different stuff in it. Complete. Let's look at our targets. So um, I've got a surface deposit of hydrogen peroxide, and I've got some subsurface deposits of methanol. Monohydrate. So let's see. Um, let's select the surface deposit. Uh, it's nice, we'll get to see a little bit of a mix. So I'm going to select my abrasion blaster. This asteroid might be a little tricky because it's spinning a little faster. Need to see that. I'm going to slip around this way. Let's see if I can catch up to this deposit here. I'm using my lateral thrust and yawing to the, in the opposite direction so I can kind of strafe around. Let's get a little bit of a lock. All right, we got that one. Um, my Collector Limpet expired, so I'm going to launch a new one. Let's go get this chunk. Bring it in. Notice I'm keeping the ship as still as I can while these large chunks are coming in. Like I mentioned before, since I don't have shields, if I move around too much while they're coming in, it'll bang up my hull a little bit. Not bad, but... Okay, let me select one of these uh, methanol monohydrate crystal subsurface deposits. I'm going to switch fire groups to displacement missile. And um, let's see what we can do. Now, when the asteroids are spinning like this, you can either um, position yourself so that you wait for the spot to come around, or you can go after it yourself. 
let's see, let's switch to this one since this one's in my target. You kind of have to lead a little bit. And here we go. There we go. Let's see how many... I, I got two, two chunks out of that. Good. I'm going to try and hit the same spot as many times as I can, see how many I get out of it. Again, I'm just going to hold still, let the collector take this stuff in. One of the advantages, if, if I had shields, um, I wouldn't have to worry about getting banged up by the uh, incoming rocks impacting my hull, because <laughs> the shields would just absorb it. Um, but when you really need shields, if we find a core asteroid, you'll really see what I'm talking about here. So let's line up on this one again. See if I can get another chunk out of it. All right. I missed. Oh, not good. All right, that's getting away from me because this asteroid is spinning a little. I completely missed that second shot. This, is, this asteroid is spinning quite a bit, so it's kind of hard to keep up with it. But sometimes you have to just position yourself ahead and wait for the for the spot to come around. It's harder to do when when you're moving. Nope. It's a little bit tricky when the asteroids are spinning this much. This isn't even the fastest spinning asteroid, so you can see this type of mining is much more active because you kind of have to position yourself, <coughs> work your way around. And uh, operate the little mini mining mini game. There we go. That's a good shot. And I got two chunks out of that, so I got in four chunks out of this spot. Um, normally, if I was just if I was just um, doing this to make money, I'd just pick whatever whatever target comes around that's convenient and switch targets back and forth until I deplete them. Uh, I'm just trying to get, give you a feel for how much you can really get out of one um, one subsurface deposit. So I've gotten four of these big chunks. Um, I've refined a couple of uh, a couple of tons of this stuff already. We'll go around, set up another shot on this. Looks like I'm getting three shots, even though I didn't miss one. Gonna drill again. And I got two out of this one too. And the deposit is still there, so this is good. So it looks like you can get um, plenty of shots, and maybe the number of times that you miss that determines when it depletes. But um, this is. This is much better than it used to be. It used to be you'd only get, a, you know, when you get your drill in there three times, um, whether you get the deposit or whether you miss the deposit, you'll um, you'll deplete the, uh, completely deplete the deposit. But it looks like these subsurface deposits now have a lot more chunks that you can extract in them. So this has become a much more viable way of mining than it used to be, at least if you get an expensive mineral. Um, this is not a particularly expensive mineral uh, compared to what you get for low temperature diamonds. This is almost not worth your time. <laughs> but I'm going to see if I'm going to keep going on this one until I actually deplete it all the way. 
And you see there, I waited till it came around <laughs> this time. So let's say, bang. Oh, I just barely missed it. And that depleted it. So I got a good number of, number of shots on it, um, if I was a little bit more accurate. And um, if you look, if you watched, um, if you were paying attention to the indicator on the lower left, as the missile is drilling into the asteroid, the um, sections that have the deposits in it are marked in blue. You've got to release the trigger. You hold down the trigger while it's drilling, and then you release the trigger when it's on one of the blue marks, and you'll get... Let's uh, demonstrate that again. You'll get rewarded for it. If you miss, you get knocked. Here, okay, let's demonstrate again. Holding down the trigger, detonating it in this big block. Well, let's see, what did I get out of that? Did I get one or two? I think that was one. Try this again. Oh, bad timing. Like I said, I don't quite have the touch. I obviously don't have quite have the touch for subsurface mining. Not as well as I used to. But at least this deposit's an easier place to, ma to manage. Uh, one tricky thing, you notice the graph on the top. That tells you places where the rock is denser and less dense so the drill will actually change speeds as it's going through and to try and trip you up there we go so it looks like that looks like two So if you really want to make profits what you, by subsurface mining, you'll go looking around for asteroids with the really valuable stuff. You'll want to look for uh, subsurface deposits with low temperature diamonds especially, or uh, other minerals that are, that are high ticket items like void opals, painite, uh, tritium, and such. Uh, let me just take another shot while I'm here. And this hot spot is, uh, this deposit is uh, cooperating. Haha! <laughs> or not cooperating. It's in a good spot where it, the rotation isn't too bad. So I'm getting a good amount of stuff out of it. L unfortunately this this mineral and mining is not worth a lot of money, but um, for the purposes of demo, it's the same process no matter how valuable the mineral is. What I'll do is after I'm after I'm done with this ship, I'll go out and I'll try to do some min-max mining with uh, my bigger ship. All right. So that's enough of that. I'm going to go back to my prospecting fire group. I'm going to point my nose towards the center of the hot spot again. Start pinging away. And again, for those of you that missed it, um, I like to do this with, um, with night vision turned on. I think it makes it a little bit easier to spot the glowing asteroids. I'm also going to close my cargo scoop so I can move a little faster. So now I'm going to try and find a um, an asteroid that I can use core mining on. Now we see there's a bunch that are glowing. They're not glowing particularly bright. The core asteroids tend to be more compact and more roundish shaped and they tend to glow really brightly. So I'm going to try and look for one that glows really bright and really stands out. 
They can be a little tricky to spot. I, I Personally, I think they used to be easier to spot, and at some point it was... They were made a little trickier to spot. <coughs> a little less distinct. <coughs> so this oblong one down here is glowing a little bit brighter, but that's not bright enough. You can see one off to the right that's hiding there. It's that's that's red. It's not bright yellow. Or I'm seeing ones that are orange, but they're not bright yellow, and they're not compact ones. So I'm just going to keep cruising through here at, at full throttle and ping away until we find one. It may take a little while to find one. This type of asteroid is rare. They're hard to spot. And even in a hot spot, there aren't that many of them. But uh, one is all we need for demonstration purposes. And you'll see from the amount of minerals that you can squeeze out of one of them, you'll... Um, you'll understand why they're fairly rare. And you'll see that um, you really <laughs> only need to find a couple of them for it to really be worth your while. If you want, this one looks, this one looks tempting, but I can tell you from experience that is not bright enough to be a full core. Well, maybe it is. Uh, one of the characteristics you see like I said, they've gotten a little tricky to spot sometimes. If you noticed when I, um, when I was a little, you see how it's kind of shifted colors a little bit? Um, when you have night vision on, sometimes they do that. The, the um, core asteroids will do that. I don't think this is one, because that's definitely not bright enough, but I'm going to fire a prospector at it, just to be sure. And just so you can get a get an idea for how tricky it is to spot these. Sometimes with night vision, you can actually pick out the. Uh, so you know, this is not a deep core asteroid. Otherwise, it would there would be a there would be a note at the bottom of the information pane on the lower left that would say it's uh, a core asteroid. So I'm not going to bother with that. Kind of trying to get you to have a feel for how tricky it is to spot these. So we see a smaller roundish asteroid that glows really bright when I hit it with a pulse wave analyzer. Uh, then we'll know we've got a very good prospect for a core asteroid. That's almost the right shape. That's not bright enough. That is pretty bright. Well, I don't think that's bright enough. We'll hit this with a with a limpet and see. Sometimes I'm surprised and I, I end up being wrong. <laughs> Yeah, this is probably a pretty good asteroid for what it's got, but it's got low value Asteroids. minerals. So you see, even though that one looks solid, that was not br the bright, bright yellow that I'm looking for. Sometimes I'm mistaken, so I do check them once in a while, but... Those are pretty good solid color, but I'm looking for solid bright yellow. Sometimes when, when you have night vision on and sometimes when you get close up, closer to them, they will shift color a little bit on the pulse wave scanner. But the usual defining characteristic is, is that they're pretty bright. So this one over here looks like it's the right shape. Like I said, they usually tend to be the compact ones. That does not look bright enough, but I'm going to get a little closer. This 
see, that's still orangish. That's more that that's getting brighter. More of the popcorn shape. Usually they're super bright, but you see how it shifted colors? That's sometimes is an indication. Let's see if this one's right. I really don't I don't think it is because it's really not bright enough. Uh, when you see it when you see it, you'll get what I'm talking about. There we go. This is a core asteroid. I wasn't sure about this one. Usually they're brighter. But you notice how it shift when I had the pulse wave on it, I got a nice solid color and it kind of shifted a little bit. That's usually a good indication. Also, that compact popcorn looking size is another good one. And you notice now that on our prospector, at the bottom of our left pane, in bright blue letters, it says Core Detected Granditerite. Uh, that's a fairly, a fairly, that's not one of the top tier ones, but that's a fairly um, well valued, uh, high value, <coughs> high value target. So, what we've got to do is we've got to switch to our seismic charge launcher. Um, now this is where things get a little complicated. So what we're going to do is, if we look at our contacts menu, see asteroid fisher. Those are the places where we're going to shoot our our um, seismic charges. You also notice there's tritium deposits. You can mine those now if you, if you wanted. Um, I'm going to go right for the good stuff in the core. If you select an asteroid fisher. Um, it's easier to see here on the bottom left you see this one's a low strength fissure you'll have low average and high strength what happens is you're gonna have to put several charges on this asteroid until you build up enough charge to crack the asteroid you can't see the indicator that shows you that yet um, that indicator will be in the top right um, you want to get enough charges to get that in the blue. If you're too high and it goes into the red zone, which you'll see in a minute, um, you won't get as much yield out of the asteroid. If you're too low and you don't get up to the blue zone, you won't get as much out of it. If you hit it right in the blue zone, uh, you'll get the most you can get out of the asteroid. Um, so the way you do that your seismic charge actually has three settings depending how long you hold the trigger down if you notice on my target reticle on either side there are three dashes as I hold down the trigger those will light up if you let go while it's still in the first while the glow is still in the first set you'll set a low intensity charge the middle will be a medium intensity charge and if all three are lit up you'll get a full intensity charge. You gotta match up your charge strength with your fissure type. Now a low strength fissure means that that's a, the weakest, that's a very weak point in the asteroid. So your charges will be more effective there. Average, they'll have medium effectiveness. High strength, they'll have the least effectiveness. So usually, um, Whatever the first one you hit, you're probably going to want to use a full strength charge. But after that, if you have a low strength fissure, you're going to want to use a medium or a low charge, depending on how far away you are from that blue zone that we'll see. And uh, if it's a high fissure, you want to use a stronger charge. Um, if it's a low strength fissure, you want to use a lower strength charge so you don't blow up too much. Um, you'll see as we go. I've got a low strength fissure. I'm going to put a f targeted when it comes around so I can see it. I'm going to put a full strength seismic charge. I'm going to hold down my trigger until uh, the reticle is, all three sections of the reticle are lit up. Also, if you see where it says seismic charge in the lower right of my HUD, all three sections, blue sections there will light up. 
come around, there's my target right there. It's easier to hit them if you're not moving laterally. You do have to lead a little bit. I'm gonna try one, two, three. Now see my indicator? I'm about halfway there. Now the clock is running. You got a good amount of time though. <coughs> so I'm gonna select another fisher. This is average strength. I'm gonna give it um, level two. That's medium charge. See, I'm just barely in the blue. I want to get a little bit more in there. So let me find another fissure. This is a low strength. Uh, I'm going to give this a low intensity charge. That is just about right. So now I'm going to back off. Especially since I have no shields, I want to get about two kilometers away before I before the time runs out. I do have plenty of time. Without shields, I'll take some damage. So I'm about two and a half kilometers. That's good. So now we'll go back over to our contacts panel. We'll select one of the one of the chart one of the fissures where I laid a charge. Now you notice you can disarm the charge. So if you've gone too far and you want to back off, you can disarm one of the charges. Or you can go to detonate now. I'm going to go to detonate now. That's going to reduce the clock down to 10 seconds so we can see the fun. Detonate now. Here we go. That's the most satisfying thing to see in the game. <laughs> So now if we look at our contacts list, we have a bunch of uh, a bunch of fragment, big fragments of this granditerite floating in space, and we have a bunch of surface deposits of it that we can now mine. So I'm going to get onto my abrasion blaster, which is the tool we use for um, surface deposits. We're going to close in, open up the cargo scoop. to get my collector limpet out there. I don't want to go all the way in because a lot of those fragments in there, there my limpet drone will crash into them and I'll waste a bunch of limpet drones. Um, I'm going to let it start collecting up the, the floating chunks. I'll shift around a little bit so it doesn't have to fly quite as far. Follow it over a little bit. Again, I want to try to come to a stop just so that I don't accidentally uh, get bumped by the asteroid pieces. Let's take a look at our hopper. See, I've already... I've already mined an entire ton of this stuff, and I've got a long way to go. And you see, that has an average price of 160000 um, That sounds about right. You can probably get between one hundred and fifty and 200000 for that, depending on where you sell it. Um, when I say that, I mean this commodity. Low temperature pr diamonds have a very volatile price. You can find it for very high prices in the right areas. Looking at our hopper, um, it's still gathering up. The the uh, limpet drone is going out and it's gathering up the free floating pieces. A little bit at a time. And uh, I'm actually going to try and move closer. Once I get these, then I can go in with a abrasion blaster and start scraping off all those other deposits, and we're gonna end up with a good amount of this stuff. If this was low temperature diamonds, I'd <laughs> I'd really be cleaning up right now. This is when it would be really handy to have multiple limpet drones.
so again, um, again, just thinking about when we were setting our seismic charges, if you notice the uh, display in the upper right, um, I was pretty close to max. I was edging into the red zone a little bit. Um, if you got to the point where it's where a lot of those more of those bars were in the red, I'd probably want to disarm one of the charges and lay a new charge in a different fissure. Um, probably a lower intensity charge. Again, you want to get it in that blue zone so you can get a get a good yield. I'm getting a lot of minerals out of this. So now it looks like we got all the free floating stuff. And these are all surface uh, surface deposits that we can use our abrasion blaster to clean off. So blue me um, if the target's blue, that means it's facing you. So I'm gonna go select it, fire away. So there's a lot of you know maneuvering around to do here. See, we put, picked up so much stuff now that my cargo hold is full. So now um, I can still I can still collect this stuff. It'll just keep filling up slots in my uh, refinery while it does. So we, what we're going to do to make more space, I'm going to come in here. And I'm actually going to dump a few of my limpets. See, I'm down to 13 limpets already. So this um, doesn't take long to fill a 32-ton hold. But um, I'm going to select the limpets. And I'm going to jettison maybe, maybe eight of them. Now I notice when I jettison, you can either jettison or abandon. Ah, I picked the wrong one. <laughs> so now my collector limpet is trying to collect them. So let's go in here. I always forget which is which. Go back to my limpets. Do an abandon. <laughs> All right, let me give me a second to work this out here. Yeah, it's going to pick up the. Uh, it's picking up the. the limpets instead of uh, instead of what I wanted to because I selected the wrong uh, <laughs> I made the wrong selection when I uh, jettison I did jettison instead of abandon I think so let's see yep so when I did the abandon that was the right thing so I still have a few limpets in case I run out. Let's get back to minerals. Oh, I missed that one. get it maneuvering your ship around the faster you'll be able to pull this stuff in again it goes much quicker if you have more limpets more uh, collector if you can fly multiple collector limpets uh, I'm only flying one at a time right now which isn't horrible 
Okay, let's grab these two, and then I'll check my targets list, make sure I got all of them. And um, we can take a look at what the haul is. Again, ideally, if we wanted to make money, I'd keep going until I found low temperature diamonds. Again, we just wanted to demonstrate how it works at this point. Uh, so there's still a couple out there. Let's see, and there they are. There's one. And the other two are around the other side of this rock. While my collector limpet goes and finds that one, I'm gonna sneak around here. Tag these two. So you can see from all this flying around why I recommend using uh, using smaller size ships or medium size ships. Um, for mining because you do have to do a lot of maneuvering um, and like I said some people have no problem handling something big and slow like a type 9 or a type 10 around this some people have problems with it um, personally I think a crate or a python is probably the optimal miner um, just because if your hold is too big it'll take a long time for your for you to fill it, uh, maybe longer than you're willing to sit and play for one session, um, and that's the size that that's about the size that's good for me. Um, I've mined in an anaconda, and as big as the anaconda is, it, it's they they're usually usually nimble enough that this is no problem too. Um, other people have told me that Clipper makes a good miner. Um, some people said the cutter makes an excellent miner because it's got a huge cargo hold and well even though it's a big slow ship it's nimble enough um, your mileage may vary I personally uh, I, I don't see my see me staying out long enough to uh, to fill up a a hold more than that holds more than say 200 or so so uh, we're gonna call it here with this ship I'm gonna head back in um, and I'll switch to my bigger miner sh mining ship and um, I'll just uh, go out and do some mining um, looking for the expensive stuff with that one for a while and uh, show you show you a few more tricks if I can and uh, and um, see if we can really min max because uh, this ship is just about out of, is almost out of space uh, so we're going to close up our cargo scoop before we take off and fly back into port. Let's take another look at our inventory. So the Grand Diderite, this is, was th this, uh, this asteroid was the first time we encountered this mineral. And you see um, one full core asteroid, I got 13 tons of it. Um, you know, assuming I get 150,000 per ton, that's... Um, uh, let's see. <laughs> That's a good amount of money. <laughs> let's say I got a hundred thousand per ton. This would be a hundred and thirty. This would be um, I'm sorry, one point three million worth of grand Um I'm gonna get more than that. The average is a hundred and sixty. Um, this low temperature diamond, um, if I find the right place to sell it, would be worth uh, anywhere from a million to one point five million. Um, I don't remember the price in this system. Um, it was pretty high at one point. Um, so you can see why I was saying these two commodities probably aren't even worth your time to to uh, to mine. Um, I still have six limpets and two empty slots in my hold. Um, I could mine like one more asteroid with that and, um, and probably fill this up. So this gives you a good idea about how long you can stay out with a with a cobra with um, 32 ton cargo hold. I'm going to go back. Uh, we'll sell this stuff off. I'm going to go back into the station. We'll sell this stuff off uh, at whatever prices I can get at this station. 
switch to my big ship and go out and uh, give you a feel for how fast that cargo hold will fill up. So uh, to get out of here, our cargo hold is closed up. We're going to retract our hard points. We're going to go full pips to engine, boost our way out of the ring so we can go back to super cruise. So while I'm getting my distance from the ring, go back and select our uh, select our station. Well, this Cobra is fairly fast at about 420 is my maximum boost, so that didn't take me too long to get out of here. Get back into Super Cruise. Again, I took a little bit of care to, to um, stay away from pirates. And I was a little cautious and made sure I was standing still most of the time while my collector limpets were doing... were. Uh, bringing stuff in so I didn't suffer any hull damage and I, I just successfully mined with no shields. Um, the other key, having no shields, when you when you blow up a deep core asteroid, be at least two kilometers away when that happens, otherwise you'll take a little bit of damage. Even if you have shields, it'll rattle you even if it won't do anything. Um, if I find one when I switch ships, uh, maybe that my other ship has shields, so I'll... Uh, stay a little closer if I pop an asteroid open and uh, so you can see how much it kind of rattles you. All right. So I'm gonna go super cruise assist and coast on in. So not a bad little run. <clears throat> Again, the main reason I'm showing you this in a Cobra with a small cargo hold is to show you that you can start making good money even with a, a smaller ship, <clears throat> especially if you focus on low temperature diamonds. And uh, you know, it, it'll take a little patience, even in a hot spot, to find more of them. But if you target low temperature diamonds and you find a good place, you find the right place to sell them. <clears throat> you can get a million per. So your 32 ton cargo hold could potentially be 32 million in credits or more. <clears throat> to find those prices, you're going to have to go to external tools because there's really no good way of determining where the best market prices are for anything in game. Um, the easier site to use is eddb.io. Um, it's easier to look up prices there. Uh, it's maybe a little... The accuracy on it, maybe... It, it, that one seems to be out of date more often. Um, that's the problem, is the prices um, that these third-party sites have aren't always up-to-date. EDDB tends to be a little bit more up-to-date, even though it's easy, a little bit more out-of-date, even though it's easier to use. Um, Inara.cz uh, tends to be more accurate but it's a little bit trickier to use. It's got, um, you can do, the searches on Inara are much more powerful. It has a lot more options, but it's a little tricky sometimes to get them to work right. But Inara, I think, tends to have more accurate information. <clears throat> so the best thing you can do is um, get on one of those sites, learn to do the commodity price searches, um, and you'll quickly see, you can put the system you're in as a reference system and it'll tell you what the closest systems are. You can uh, you can sort your search by how far they are, what the prices is, or both. And uh, you can see what systems nearby you, to you are um, offering the best prices. And right now, low temperature diamonds can go for like one and a half million per ton. Um, other minerals like granditerite are six figures. Uh, a lot of them you can get for say two fifty. 250,000 per 
and uh, that adds up quick. Even um, the 250,000 per will add up quick. Um, and again, the most valuable commodities to get: low temperature diamonds. Uh, void opals are still good, not as great as they used to be. Um, tritium's always in demand because of the fleet carriers. Um, painite is not as expensive, but it's relatively easy to find because um, it's it's one of those that'll show up sometimes in uh, in um, even in um, regular laser mining. But I've I've heard this. It's easier to find overlapping painite hotspots. <laughs> um, that's still not the highest. You know, the highest um, prices you'll get are, are, aren't going to be for painite, but it's still uh, still can be valuable just because it's easier to find. All right. Let me concentrate on my landing. I'm, I'm already starting to not talk well because I'm trying to land at the same time. Again, I don't have shields, so I really want to make sure I don't scrape the sides. <laughs> but we'll be okay. For you new players out there, landing is one of the, and going through this mail slot is one of the things you're going to do a lot of as you go through the game. Game, so it gets to be almost automatic. Um, I want pad 16. I passed it already. There's pad 16. And yeah, I'm coming in upside down because I passed the pad and I'm kind of pointed in the wrong direction, so I'm going to get over it and flip around, flip over. My landing gear's already down, so I just got to center myself. And we have landed. So you notice my, uh, well, my refuel is obviously lit up because we were burning fuel in Super Cruise, so we're going to refuel. This ammo restock won't replenish your limpets. It will replenish the um, seismic charges and the displacement missiles that you used for subsurface mining and deep core mining. It will replenish those, but it will not replenish your limpets. Um, it's nice that these options are on this menu now before you even go into starport services. Let's go in and take a look. So before we go, remember if we come down here to advanced maintenance, uh, remember you got to repair your ship integrity and if you're really concerned about your paint job, that too. But if we look over here on our restock window, still down to six limpets. So that restock that I did on the front page did not replenish my limpets. You have to actually manually come into this screen and buy more limpets. I'm not going to do this now until I get rid of my cargo, though, and switch ships. So um, uh, I'm just going to sell, sell my stuff off for whatever the station is offering for them. Again, if you want to look at those third-party sites, Inara is good, eddb.io is good. Um, go on those websites learn to use their search functions to check for commodities prices you'll always be able to find the best price for any commodity sometimes the prices on those sites will be out of date but should at least point you in the right direction and get you some options so we're going to come over here we're going to go to our cell window um, hydrogen peroxide ah, the cell price is a little bit better than than i thought it's over a thousand Still, that's uh, compared to some of the other commodities that you're going to see, this is almost not worth your time. So we're going to sell that off. You're going to get about two, uh, 2,500 credits for that. Um, you see tritium here. That's uh, 
fuel, 46,000. That's not the best price you'll get, but uh, tritium's actually not, not all that hard to find. But it is in high, it's not hard to find and it's in high demand, so if you don't want to work too hard, that's a good one to go. Uh, so here we go. Here's our, uh, Here's our big one, our 13 units of Granditorite is going for 126,000, so it's actually a little bit below average. Uh, we could find a better, I, I bet you if I really looked around, I could probably find this for like 200,000. Um, but even so, those 13 units, even at this price, which is a little bit under average, um, I'm getting 1.6 million for this batch. Now, if I really look for the right system, I could get that much for this one low temperature diamond. Um, as you can see, even here where the price is not that good, I'm getting a half a million. Um, people will cringe when I sell it for this price because uh, really I could just go on, do one quick look up on, uh, on um, Inara or EDDB and, um, and probably find some place within a couple of jumps that'll buy this for a lot more but I'm just gonna dump this low temperature diamond at 572,000 for one ton of material is a good price again methanol monohydrate this is actually below average um, you know whatever <laughs> they're almost not worth it um, they do come up on um, they do come up as um, um, if you do mining missions, if you accept missions from the mission, um, <clears throat> from the mission broker, um, to have you go out and mine and bring back mining things, that's a common uh, mission target. Again, uh, while we're looking at prices, you notice Painite has a good price too at 421,000. Uh, and again, Painite is a little bit more forgiving to find. When you find it, you tend to find a, a good amount of it. Um, let's see, I think uh, sometime last week this station was doing, I think, 1.2 million for low temperature diamonds. I mined a whole bunch, and I, as I was mining them, I watched the price drop down to a million, then to 900,000, and now to 572, even though I haven't, this is the first mining I've done in, in probably a week. Um, just quick scan down here, make sure I've got everything. Yep, so that looks like everything. My hold should be empty except for the limpets. Yep. And if you notice, um, before I go, if you look down here at our hopper, um, at our refinery, I still have, you know, at least a portion of each of these in my um, in my refinery now hydrogen peroxide is and this is not worth a whole lot so I'm just gonna dump those but I've got 12% of a whoops I've got 12% of a low temperature diamond 10% of a grand diderite and more than half of a painite already made I can leave this in my hopper and next time I'm, I mine those with the ship it'll pile those on all right so as promised I'm going to go to the shipyard. I'm going to switch over to my other mining ship. Um, I've got a couple of ships here because I've just been kind of basing myself out of here. Um, I've actually got two mining ships here. I'm going to show you, well, just give you a brief glimpse at this one. It's a Type 7. Um, so I've got a good amount of, of cargo space in it. Um, you know, about 200 or just under 200, I think it's uh, 192 cargo space, and you can see from the list here, I've got a good collector Olympic controller, good refinery, I got a good prospector Olympic controller, bigger than I need, shields, fuel scoop, um, all the other stuff that we've been talking about, um, but if you notice, I've just got two mining lasers on it, and, well, two burst laser turrets for protection. Um, I use this one primarily just for laser mining so that I can get collect materials for engineering. Um, if I happen to be able to get low temperature diamonds or painite or something valuable like that with it, yeah, I'll go for it. Uh, but the primary purpose for this one is to collect materials, which is why it's just laser mining. 
Uh, but the one I want to show you is this one, my crate. We'll actually take a... <coughs> excuse me. I'll, I'll give you a closer look at it um, in the outfitting screen when we select it. This is set up very similarly to my to my um, Cobra, except with more of everything, including shields. Excuse me, I grab a quick drink of water because my voice is getting a little scratchy. This is a bigger ship than a Cobra. Cobra fits on small pad. This one fits only on a medium pad. It's a much bigger ship. Um, a lot of people like it for a combat ship. I think it makes a great miner, um, just because just because the the size is right and it's got enough hard points for for everything that I want on it. <coughs> So let's take a nice quick look. Let's look at the um, what I've got on my hard points. So uh, one thing you notice here that I didn't have on the Cobra, I've got a beam laser turret, a large beam laser uh, turret, size 3. Um, this is a pretty good weapon. Um, if you're going to be out and about in combat, uh, this ship has a decent amount of armor and shields, and it's got half-decent speed. It's not fully engineered, so it's not great, but it, it's, it can actually defend itself. I can. Um, the average NPC that's pirate out there, I can at least you know hold my own a little bit long enough to get away from. Um, if it's something smaller and weaker, I can probably kill it. Um, so I want to have weapons for protection. And I've got my four... Um, my four mining tools. So I've got one of each mining tool just like we had in the last one. They all happen to be turreted. Uh, that really doesn't matter because you use them the same way. Uh, the fact that they're on a turret just means that if I have somebody sitting multi-crew with me uh, they can operate the mining gear if we wanted. Um, at various times um, I used to keep this one, I used to not have a subsurface missile on it on this Thing, uh, the subsurface mining tool on this thing because for a while subsurface mining wasn't very was too tedious and not profitable enough um, so I actually had two beam laser turrets and I could actually fight with that thing this thing with two large beam turrets uh, as long as it wasn't anything too serious um, so a lot of times if an NPC tried to jump me and he wasn't in something big and tough I'd just kill it <laughs> with only one beam turret I'm um, not going to be as eager for combat in this thing. Um, so you see, it's set up very similar to the to the um, to the Cobra. I just have one of each tool, which is really all you need. Again, if you're going to do in a lot of intense laser mining, you might want more than one of these on it. These mining lasers on it, um, but you only ever need one abrasion blaster, one seismic charge launcher, one subsurface missile. Uh, subsurface displacement missile. Uh, the only reason you'd want to have multiples of these is if you wanted to carry more ammo. Um, that's the one drawback is you've got that that ammo limitation. But if you have the materials, you can synthesize more ammo for them. Uh, real quick, looking at my utility mounts. Um, just because I may get in trouble and I have shields on this thing, I'm running and I have the spots to do it. I'm putting on shield boosters for more protection. I've got a point defense turret on the bottom covering my cargo hatch so that, um, like we talked about before, if uh, a pirate wants to throw hatch breaker limpets at me and try and steal my stuff, um, my point defense turret can knock out the, uh, <coughs> the hatch breakers as they try to, try to clamp onto my cargo hatch. And I've got my pulse wave analyzer. Um, for my internals, again, best armor I can put on it. This one I've got a better power plant, um, and I've done a little bit of engineering on them. Thrusters with some engineering. Uh, what did I do to it? I did um, dirty drives, thermal spread. So I've got more speed, 
um, helpful in running away and thermal spread to keep me from getting too hot. I, I could probably get away with doing uh, doing drag drives. drives. So I'm not sure. I don't think heat is really that big a concern with this ship. So maybe that wasn't the best decision. Um, I've got a better frame shift drive on this thing with some modifications. And you can see my jump range is 24. So I can take this one, um, go out of the bubble to go mining in good spots and be able to get back. Life support, um, power distributor with a... What mod did I put on this thing? Uh, charge enhanced with flow control. So again, the, not building up too much heat and it... Um, and it um, helps charge things up faster, so I can just hold the trigger down on uh, on my mining laser, and so that uh, my beam laser turret can get some firing. Uh, for Class B sensors, no big deal. Uh, and again, um, you know, it's this has all larger modules. This is a much hardier ship. Um, on my optionals, I've got two size six cargo racks at 64 each 128 that's you know that's enough it'll take me about an hour or so to fill all this up um maybe more so that's uh this is a good fit for one gaming session where maybe i want to mine for a while then go do something else i've got a good size shield i put a nice big shield on this thing so that um Again, I wanted this thing to be able to handle itself with pirates. That's why I have a weapon. I have a shield. I have some shield boosters. So I've got a fairly good amount of shield strength on this thing. Nice big fuel scoop. Again, if I'm going, if I'm going to be traveling a bit with this thing, you want to you want to be able to scoop. Although um, there is a good argument that I should have put a class five collector limpet on this thing and a class three fuel scoop. Um, for a refinery, again, the biggest refinery I can stick on the thing. Uh, my 3A collector limpet. Um, this is where, if I swap this in the, f the size of this and with the size of the fuel scoop, <coughs> I might be better off. If you can see in the middle of the stats block, this has two ma max active limpets, so I'll be able to collect faster. The class 5 version of this, I believe, does three max ac active limpets. Um, prospector has two active at the same time. I could get away with a, a 1A prospector, like we talked about. Uh, surface scanner, super cruise assist, planetary approach. So you see all this stuff, you know, fills, fills up all the slots that I have, but I've got a basically a fully functioned ship that can handle light combat, escape, a lot of mining. And a little bit of, little bit of exploration too. Um, so that's the ship. Um, this is something I like to run with. Um, you could do almost exactly the same thing in a Python and have a bigger cargo hold. Um, you can do something similar in an Anaconda and have lots of have more slots for weapons, uh, more slots for for other things you want to do too um, in general um, you can build it like a combat ship except with um, fewer fewer real weapons replace most of your weapons with um, mining tools and a decent sized cargo hold and you've got a mining ship uh, I say build it like a combat ship because you're gonna run into pirates once in a while so anyway um, no sense really talking through too much. I'm just going to look at my inventory. I have some more valuable stuff in here. Um, and some of this stuff is junk, so I'm going to get rid of the junk. I've almost got a Void Opal. The Pitolite is not worthy. So you see, last time I was mining, uh, all, all these are various various levels of valuable um, so I'm going to keep those um, it's a good idea to have a couple of empty slots to play with though so, um, I do have to buy more limpets so we'll come over here to our advanced maintenance restock 
And again, I'm going to load up to at least 100 limpets. I'm probably not going to use all of them tonight because I don't think I'm going to be mining that long. But I want to show you how I'd, oops, how I'd want to go out. Uh, so we're going to go about 110. So I've got some space available. Um, actually, I'm going to prospect a lot because I want to go for high value. So let me uh, go to about 115. Uh, I could even argue to go out with my hold full of limpets completely. <coughs> Alright, we're going to go back to the same ring area. Jeez, uh, I forget the name of it. Easy, it's easier to pick off the system map. It'd be nice if you could see the hot spots here so I could target it before I take off, but um, as soon as you get into Super Cruise, you'll start to see those. So here we go. We got our selected. We've got, let's see, our hopper is cleaned up. I've got my limpets. I've got my target selected. Ready to go. The ship will, I believe, is going to be a little slower and a little less nimble than the Cobra, but it will still handle pretty well. Um. Ship release, go for departure. Another positive about the crate as a miner, even though it's a much larger ship than the Cobra, it's still a fairly compact form factor. Oh, that's a clipper coming in. Try and shift over. He's, he got stuck. <laughs> Try and sneak by him. Moderate traffic around the station. Regulate speed. So now we'll go full pips to engines while I'm traveling. back out. <clears throat> now with this ship, since I've got shields, I'll typically try to keep at least one pip on shields the whole time. Um, and just ch change full pips from, uh, you know, I'm at full pips to engines now while I'm traveling. Once I start mining, I'll go full pips to weapons, uh, which is both my laser and both my actual laser turret and my uh, mining tools they're, they're counted as weapons on that as well let's see, uh, not close enough to see the uh, see the hot spots yet not using super cruise assist this time so again, I'm just going to come to a stop before I actually hit the planet anyway. So while I'm thinking about it here, I'm going to make sure my night vision is on. Um, night vision is, is a matter of preference. Like I said before, I think it's a little bit easier to see... It's, a little bit easier to see the asteroids in general with night vision on. I think it's a little bit easier to interpret the pulse wave scanner when it's on. <clears throat> so we're going to go out. It's a little later than I thought, so I'm going to at least try to get one big score so that you can see, get a feel for uh, how long it'll take to fill up my hold before I call it quits. So what I'd like to do for the benefit of people that are going to go back and watch this later that may want to pick up some mining tips. What I'm going to try and do is go back and actually list timestamps in the description about what I'm talking about various topics to make it a little bit easier to find. In the video, because uh, in a nice two-hour video, it's, uh, it's a little tedious to go paging through it. So... Um, now before I 
drop into um, <clears throat> drop into one of these hot spots. Uh, so I hope you guys found this informative so far. Um, hope you had a good feel for what what kind of equipment you need and what kind of types of mining you can do. How to find the best spots to mine. Um, you know, you want to look for pristine reserves, and you want to look for hot spots, especially if it's low temperature diamonds. Um, low temperature diamonds are found in icy rings, although there's plenty of valuable stuff found in other ring types. Uh, but low temperature diamonds are currently the hottest commodity out there. Remember, you've got laser mining, which you don't need your pulse wave an analyzer for. The other types of mining you're going to find, you want to find the asteroids that glow on your pulse wave analyzer. <clears throat> then um, the ones with the strongest glow will have deep core. Deep core, you're going to crack them open with your seismic charge launcher, then use an abrasion blaster to pick them up. Um, Remember, your limpets do expire. Um, remember how I set up the the um, fire groups. Um, just to show you really quick, I basically set up the fire groups on this thing, on this crate, the same way I did in the Cobra, except I have a separate fire group with uh, with weapons in it, with my well, one weapon in it. Um, remember, if you don't see the hot spots when you come up to a, to a ring system, you may have to hit it with your detailed discovery scanner, uh, with your detailed surface scanner. They are here. Um, we're going to go for low temperature diamonds. Back to our low temperature diamond hotspot. Um, something's going on with the display. It's not actually showing the orange part of the spot, part of the hotspot. Um, not sure why it does that. It's a probably a graphical error, but I'm just going to drop in close to where the uh, the target ring is. And remember these uh, hotspots. Your um, Super Cruise Assist can't always lock onto them. Um, you did notice there are s actually. Let me stop and show you on my navigation pane. You do notice there's a couple of resource extraction sites marked as low. Uh, you don't want to go there for mining. What that is is that's a place where NPC miners are and the pirates that prey on them. Uh, that's a place you'd go in a combat ship to go get into a fight and go pick off pirates that are trying to hit the miners that are the, the NPC miners that are there. Uh, the place you want to go is the hot spots. There'll still be pirates there, but uh, not as many. The if you see a resource extraction site, that's really that's really a place that you're gonna want to patrol as a bounty hunter rather than a place you're gonna want to mine. Because it's gonna be a little too active with pirates. And um, I don't think they're going to have particularly uh, particularly strong mineral con concentrations there. All right, we're getting close. Yep, Super Cruise Assist does not want to lock onto this spot. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. It's okay, it's not hard to drop into these manually. Basically, um, as long as you're not going too fast, um, when you get too close, it'll just drag you out of Super Cruise. If you're not going too fast when you do that, it'll, uh, you won't take damage. And if you do take damage, it's going to be minimal. So 
here we go. We should be dropping into this ring system any second now. Uh, one thing that you'll see with this ship that's kind of neat is uh, is using multiple collector limpets. And I can throw out two at a time. Oh, there's a contact there, but it's a space cop. I think yeah, let's see. He's driving a vulture. I like vultures. If you watch some, if you watch some of my other videos, um, videos, vultures one of my favorite ships to go out and uh, and just have fun doing bounty hunting in. Um, unfortunately, my vulture is out in Colonia right now. Even though it's almost 100% engineered, I just think I still need. I, I think I still need to work on my power distributor, and that's about it. And I may need. Um, I may need some of my uh, utility mounted devices. Might need it as well. So let's see. Let's go. Uh, start hitting it with the pulse wave analyzer. I'm gonna try and find the good stuff. See, that one's the right shape. It's not changing. Is it changing color? Let me take another look at this one. No, I don't think that's it. I'll prospect it anyway. Um, subsurface is subsurface is now more profitable than it used to be. So. If I happen to find low temperature diamonds or other high valuable stuff that's on subsurface, I'll go grab it. And uh, now nah, this isn't looking too good. Asteroid scan. Yeah, nothing, nothing really interesting there. <clears throat> so we'll just keep cruising towards the center. And if um, I see ones that look especially interesting. I'll try and hit them up. That one definitely looks like it's wrong shape, even though it's got a good glow. <clears throat> the stronger the glow, the potentially better the take from that asteroid is, but you never really know until you hit it with a prospector. Let's see, it might be worth taking a peek. I've got plenty of limpets, so I can afford to prospect a little bit. I'm gonna move a little bit faster, more like I would do. Nah, nothing good there. More like I would would normally from trying to make money. Well, sometimes it can take a lot of patience to find the good stuff in these hot spots. <clears throat> oh, I don't know if you caught what just happened there. I launched a limpet drone while I was changing speeds and it bumped into my own hull and blew up. So I wasted a, I mean I've got a lot of limpet drones but right now but I did break one. So you got to watch out for that if if you're launching a limpet, a prospector limpet, you want to hold your speed steady or come to a stop. Usually if you just hold your speed steady, it's okay. If you're changing speeds or maneuvering at all while you, uh, before your limpet drone, before your prospector limpet kind of gets away, you run the risk of bumping into it and taking it out. Prospector limpet engaged. Normal light, let's see. There's some tritium. I'll, I'll go for scan. yeah. I'll go for some tritium. Tritium's worth worth my while. So let's go over to my displacement missile. Dodge that asteroid. Right around the top of this one. Oh, that's why we have shields. <laughs> angle on this. this 
this asteroid is not this asteroid is not spinning at all but it's spinning very very slowly let's get in and drill got it open my scoop deployed programming the input drone Get my collector limpet out there. I'm gonna launch two limpets. And while it's collecting that, I'm gonna mine some more. Let's see. Keep hitting this one. I think I got three chunks in the air so far. That's like five or six chunks in the air now. Because <clears throat> that one released two. I'm just going to keep hitting this. My two drones are going to just going to keep going back and forth and grabbing that stuff. Ah, I missed. Too much talk, not enough mining. Alright, I can get at least one more shot. Oh, come on! Trying to go too fast. Subsurface mining is tricky. I can't believe I missed three in a row. Come on. There we go. <clears throat> oh, I think I got three chunks out of that one. That's a good shot. Definitely the trickier, trickiest type of mining, so I lost my last shot there. Let's see, and see with two limpet drones it was able to keep up really well. Let's get this one in and we'll take a look. Um, I did not previously have tritium in my in my hopper. Let's see, I got 79% of, of a tritium. I got four tons of tritium out of that. We know tritium was going for about 400,000 at this station, so that's, you know, about 1.6 mil already. Not bad. Let's get back to my prospector. And look for more interesting stuff. Yeah, so I'll do I'll do some surface subsurface subsurface and if I find a core it'd be kind of cool to show you a core uh, some core mining which while well, I have a shielded ship so I can be up close when it explodes <laughs> give you a nice show This one's fairly bright, so it's probably got something good. Tritium. Scan Tritium is worth my while. This one will be a little trickier because the asteroid is spinning so much. Close in and let the asteroid bring the target to me. That's 
a little tricky to hit. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just missed it. So what we'll do is we'll circle around this way. Sort of catch up to it as it spins. You will really learn to use your lateral and, and vertical thrusters <laughs> while doing this type of mining. closer. So I know. Oh, I did just noticed on my bottom left uh, panel, it's telling me how much tritium I have in my cargo hold. I think that's a fairly recent addition. Timing's right, I can get two hits on it as it goes around. Let's see, I think I got a mission offer. Those mission offers are those mission offers are always almost always not worth it. They're usually too low paying. So let's see, either my second limpet is it gonna expire or the limpet that expired actually got smacked by the asteroid. Programming limpet drone. Let's just preemptively drop a second limpet. You may have also noticed with the bigger limpet controller that uh, these limpet drones take longer before they time out. So not only do you get the option to use more limpets, but the limpets you have last longer. that shot. Yeah, even though it seems like I'm going through a lot of displacement missiles, so if you notice I still have uh, Collector limpet expired. I still have 80. I still have 80 rounds in the magazine, so it's... Expired. Oh! I think they got hit by the uh, by the asteroid. This is probably a better place to sit, so I can see where the uh, chunks are. I believe my my drones actually got hit by the asteroid. actually try aiming this time. <laughs> I'm starting to get the feel for it again. Like I said, it's been a, it's been a while since I did a lot of uh, subsurface mining. And look at this, I've only hit up a couple of these and I'm already at 12 tritium. 
So that, that's a decent profit considering that I'm not, you know, that's a decent profit for something that's not low temperature diamonds. Especially considering that I have not been at it very long. Could have got a couple more chunks out of that, but I missed. So I started getting sloppy. Let's see. I don't think there's no, there's nothing else good at this one. Another tip when you're traveling like this and looking for asteroids, you can actually you'll get. You'll actually uh, travel faster if you close your cargo scoop. So especially if you're prospecting for for core asteroids, you're going to want to keep covering ground. I'm going to check out that one up there. So that one's got that color. Sh it's pretty solid and it's got that color shift. It doesn't look like the right shape, but that's not always a good indication. Programming limpet drone. Cargo scoop deployed. Swing over this way a little. Shape isn't always a good indication. They're usually, they're usually smaller and rounder. This one was pretty solid and had a color shift. Prospector limpet engaged. Nope, not a core asteroid, but let's see. Asteroid scan complete. Uh, I'll pass on bromelite. And bromelite, you'll, you know, is still profitable, but it's it's low level of profit. Oh, I'm right in the middle of the the hot spot. That looks like it's the right shape. At least from this distance, I could be wrong. Not sure if it's bright. I don't think it's bright enough, though. Eh, maybe it's not the right shape. That looks more oblong. It was past the center of the hotspot. I haven't seen any low temperature diamonds at all. But then again, I'm not looking at uh, the asteroids for um, laser mining. Or low temperature diamonds you can find you can find in just the non-glowing asteroids that you can only laser mine. It's better if you find core or uh, subsurface or the bigger de or surface deposits for it. But sometimes it can be, it can be elusive. Only hydrogen peroxide. You notice I've left my uh, my pips at uh, one pip to weapons. Um, that's because the other mining tools, it, you're generally only firing one shot at a time. So it's not as stressful on your um, on your power distributor. If you're using the mining laser, then yeah, you want to pump up your... Uh, want to pump up more pips to weapons. Let me see, that one looks a little interesting. I don't think it's bright enough, but I like the shape. Maybe. It did shift colors a little bit. You notice how the how the orange pattern shifts slightly. That's frequently an indication that you may have a a core asteroid. Not certain on this one though. 
not quite the right shape. And it's not quite bright enough, but we'll see. Uh, this has oh this has I can laser mine low temperature diamonds let's see asteroid scan complete and you see that it's got uh, low temperature diamonds on the composition list that means I can laser mine the low temperature diamonds and I'll just uh, put everything else on my ignore list that's worthwhile it'll be smaller chunks but it'll be something. Low temperature diamonds are worth enough that you may as well just grab them whenever you can. I think this is a larger mining... I think the mining laser I had on the Cobra was a size 1 and this is a size 2, so it's a little bit more powerful. I should also pump up my weapons a bit. Alright, let me go to my contacts. Make sure that's on my ignore list, and not the, oops, that needs to be on my ignore list. Yep. And I already refined a low temperature diamond. I'm gonna go. I see him being short work to this asteroid. I'm already at about 50%. Material contact. Um, you, you heard that uh, slightly different collection sound. That was uh, sulfur. That's one of the engineering materials. That's a fairly common material, so it's not a big deal, but it's nice to have. Oh, we're finding another diamond. And again, the collection is going a lot faster uh, for two reasons. One, I've got a more powerful mining laser, so I'm breaking off chunks of this asteroid faster. And I've got two collector limpets, so I'm collecting this stuff up twice as fast as I was in the Cobra. Asteroid depleted. There we go, I just depleted the asteroid. There's a lot of chunks out there, so just let them go. But I've already got two chunks of... Uh, I've already refined two low temperature diamonds and I'm already most of the way so doing good doing good I think I just refined another one and uh, I think this is a good asteroid because it's it seems these chunks are giving me a good the, uh, there's a lot of chunks and they're giving me good yield per chunk at least If we see the low temperature diamond bar, it's, uh, well, it's now in the middle. <laughs> it's going up at a good clip, even though these are small chunks. Uh, the large chunks, you know, you know, every two gets you, uh, get your refinery. These chunks, um, it's, it's something like ten, I think, to fill up all the bars. But it's going fast because I've got uh, two limpets working it. I think uh, I have a I have a uh, crate configured for mining, almost the same as this one that I left up in Colonia, which is about twenty-two thousand light years away. Um, that one I think I have a larger limpet controller on. I think that one does. I think that's the one that I have that does three limpets, the controller, and that just that blows through this stuff real fast. Let's see. I've already got four low temperature diamonds. Twelve tons of tritium, and I still got 102 limpets. Five tons. Got about nine tons of cargo capacity left open, so I'm gonna have to 
blow through some prospector limpets. That's why if you fill up your holds with limpets like that, you don't have to sweat it too much if you end up wasting limpets from them crashing into things or uh, or if you miss with a prospector limpet. Uh, you, you don't want to you don't want to be cheap on those. Like I said, limpets are not expensive at all compared to what you're mining for. So remember, the limpets go for about 100 credits each, and if you refine one of these, one of these more expensive minerals, that's potentially 500,000 right there, so that's more than enough to, to supply you with limpets for a week. <laughs> So I picked up a couple of materials. It's always good to pick up more uh, engineering materials. So one of my collectors expired. Which is okay. Oh, both my collect both my limpets timed out. Got a good amount of time out of them. Keep cruising through and pinging. Uh, this one's a nice, intense color. Doesn't look like a core asteroid, but it's got a nice color. Nice dark color, so it's possibly got some good valuables in it. Prospector limpet engaged. Uh, Nothing interesting on the composition list. No. Nope. Asteroid scan complete. So you can't really tell until you actually hit the asteroid with a prospector. Interesting targets here. That one is potentially bright enough. This one might be the mother load. Looks bright enough. I'm not getting that little shift, but that's a nice solid color. That's a really nice solid color. Let's see what it's got. Oh yeah, low temperature diamond core. Now we're going to have some fun. Let me check my... I got a little bit of... I might have to dump some stuff to make room. Whoops. Uh, let's see. I might have to dump some limpets across that bridge when I come to it. Let's go up to our seismic charge. Once again, I'm going to select, this is a low strength, I'm going to hit it full force, and then adjust from there. Two, three. Detonation sequence initiated. Okay, now the clock starts and you can't really slow down too much. This is average strength. So I'm going to hit it with uh, another full strength charge. is 
average strength. I'll hit this one with a full strength charge too. That looks good. I'll back off a little bit. Go to about here. I'm not going to back off all the way. My shields will be able to take this. So we go to our contacts, find our asteroid fisher. Detonation Detonate now. Seconds. This should rattle me pretty good. There you go. <laughs> Sensor disrupted. Optimum yield exceeded yield forecast low. I, I think that might have been in error because I was right in there. All right, let's get my cargo scoop cargo open. Scoop Let me take a look at my contacts list. Uh, yeah, that's a pretty good. I probably have to dump some limpets. <laughs> But from the way these asteroids are spinning, I'm willing to bet that I'm probably going to have to I'm probably going to lose some of these uh, collector limpets. Yeah, so we're going to make uh, make mad profit off this. And, uh, the peanut gallery out there will probably get mad at me if I don't sell them for top dollar. <laughs> I've already refined two. Watch as these come in. That's three. If that actually exceeded optimum yield, it didn't exceed it by much. So let's see. Um... Still a couple of free floating bits to to pick up. I'm gonna let them get all the ones that are floating free in space right now first before I start scraping these off with the uh, abrasion blaster. Spots left in my hold. Pull a little bit closer. left. And that sound you hear is the canopy going cold. So when you when you get into the getting close to the area where the explosion was, where the center of the old asteroid was, you know, kind of in between where these chunks are now, um, for some reason it's really cold in the center there. If you notice my uh, the uh, line in the lower right corner that indicate above the fuel indicator that shows your heat signature, notice how small it is right now. That's a trick when you're collecting up your um, when you're collecting up your core mining spoils. Uh, if you stay tight into the center of it. Um, You'll have a low heat signature, and it'll be harder for pirates to target you if they're in the area. So let me, um, i got to go to my... got to go to my abrasion blaster. Good 
position here to knock the rest of these off. There's no pirates out here now, so I'm not really worried about it, but where I'm tucked in here, a pirate would have to get in nice and close to be able to protect you. Or target you. So it's like the concept of the stealth fighter that uh, if you've seen me fly my Imperial Courier, that uses um, beam lasers with the thermal vent variant to basically dump all my heat and disappear off people's uh, people's uh, targeting sensors. Tied a slot to go through. Nice thing about the abrasion blaster is you can take as many shots as you want. Don't have to worry about ammo. And again, the rate of fire is whoops. Again, the rate of fire is slow enough that uh, you don't have to particularly worry about um, oops. that you don't have to particularly worry about um, about running out of power. Let's see. I'm gonna dump a couple of these. Abandon. I'm going to dump a couple of limpets just so I have room for more of these di diamonds. When I go back to prospecting, I'll probably use up a bunch. Okay. There's one target left. Where is it? It's all the way over here. Go. Go get him, boys. Alright, now it looks like all we're going to get here. Go back into prospecting mode. Uh, close to the center of this hotspot, so I'm just going to pick a direction and go for a little bit. Let's see, what was my haul there? <laughs> I'm up to 19 low temperature diamonds. So you can see how this adds up real quick. I've got 19 low temperature diamonds, 12 tritium. I'm already over what the, uh, I'm at, um, I'm already at about where the, um, Cobra would have been completely filled up, and I still have lots of, lots of limpets and lots of cargo space to deal with. I, my cargo hold is almost full, but it's, um, it's filled with limpets, so I can either dump them or, uh, you know, or use them prospecting. So it's better to have too many limpets than too few. Engaged. So this one's just got tritium. Asteroid scan complete. Pick up some more tritium. This one's got a surface target. And I can laser mine tritium too. Let's 
going to be a see how fast we can fill up our hold kind of thing. Bromelite, not really interested in. Uh, let me retarget my prospector. So this has all tritium. Oh, not good. You didn't catch what I did there, I just screwed up. <laughs> I accidentally boosted when I was trying to open my cargo hold. So at some point I accidentally closed my cargo hold. And I mistakenly hit the boost button instead of opening the cargo hold. Alright, so let's get back in here. We're going to laser out the tritium in this asteroid. That's a nice shot, shadow of the ship on the spinning asteroid. Enough to make you dizzy. <laughs> the asteroid's at 50% now. I'm dropping. Five percent left to go, twenty percent left to go. And that's a lot of tritium out there. Asteroid and that's it for the asteroid. That's a lot of stuff out there. All right, that's okay, because I actually want to use some of these up, because I'm probably <laughs> going to be running out of space on my cargo hold soon. If I would really wanted to be picky, I'd only mine Void Opals, but... I know tritium is a good price in this system, and I won't have to hunt for that price. Oh. Lost another collector limpet. Yeah, this might take a few minutes. I got a lot of tritium fragments out of this one. Looking at my... Yeah, it's phosphorus, is another common material, so nothing too special there. Yeah, just gotta be patient and wait out the limpets. The cargo space is running low again. is a good problem to have. It's a good problem to have where you're filling up your hold faster than you're using up your your limpets.
All right, I've only got room for one more unit in my hold, and then I gotta start dropping with this again. So while we're waiting for these limpets to to collect up a few more mining tips and tricks that we've talked about earlier is you do want to make sure that you manage your ignore list so if um, you see an element out there that's something that you don't want make sure you add it to your ignore list and make sure the stuff that you do want is not added to the ignore list. You can't really look at the ignore list as a whole thing. You can manage it through this interface only. Let's see, I've got to make some room for this stuff. See, some limpets are not ready to expire. Dump a couple more of these. Oh, okay. I think I got everything. All right. All right. I didn't really need to dump those three limpets, but that's fine. I don't mind. Nice color on that one. Does not look like a core asteroid, but it's as bright as one. Programming the drone. I could be wrong about what it is, so we'll see. That's why we have prospect limits, so we can find out what it actually is. Got a little bit of low temperature diamonds and some tritium. So let's farm it. Okay, that's a surface deposit, so we'll get our abrasion blaster. Okay. One of these this tritium is a surface deposit. Closer, let it come to me. I'll swing around a little. reminded me to open my cargo hatch. Now we gotta go subsurface. Oh, with this spin, this is gonna be tricky. Ah. Did not get a good angle on it. Okay, let's scooch around this asteroid, and you gotta learn to use lateral thrust and yaw at the same time so you can basically circle around the asteroids. Alright, oh, 
with the best angle. Uh, I'm not getting a good angle on this. I find which way it's rotating really. Find that axis. And move along the axis of rotation. Tricky to hit. Definitely a tricky one to hit. This is a fast asteroid. I predict I'm going to need more to free up more space in my cargo hold. Some distant targets. Some other NPCs are in the area. And here it comes. Tricky to get a second shot in. Collector limpet expired. Yep. Programming limpet drone. There we go. That's an easy way to get me to free up more space in the hold. Each limpet I use is another ton of stuff that I can pack in here. See, so I've got uh, 20 of each. Spinning so fast, I gotta lead the target. Oh, that was close enough. Thought I missed it. What was that? Three chunks I got that? Yeah, I got three chunks out of that one. Watch them bounce off the asteroid. Excuse me, sorry about coughing in your, uh, in your ear there. All right, let me dump a couple more. Three chunks at a shot now. This is a good. This is a good deposit. Yeah, subsurface mining definitely got a lot more profitable than it was about um, well months ago. <laughs> Not even sure how long ago it was since I last did subsurface mining. I actually stopped carrying. Uh, displacement missiles, missile launchers, just because it was too tedious and not profitable enough. And now, it seems like the minigame's a little trickier. 
but I'm getting a lot more per uh, per deposit. And just in case you haven't noticed, I named the ship Move On No LTDs here <laughs> in a lame attempt to discourage pirates. I got 26 tons of tritium, 20 tons of LTDs, and uh, well, 82 tons of limpets. So, still looking to convert more of those limpets into valuable materials or valuable sellable commodities. So we're cruising ping. Until I see something that looks worthwhile. Killed that, just killed that prospector a little bit. Prospector limpet engaged. This one has tritium in it. Asteroid scan complete. How's that for almost crashing into the asteroid? Let's check my... Um Hydroxide ignored too. Okay. Oops, I don't know, I don't know. Make sure I keep se prospector selected. Okay, I think I've got my ignore this straightened out. Let's burn through this asteroid. As much as I'd like to fill my hold, I do believe that it is too late and I am fading fast, so, so I'm going to finish off this asteroid and then I'm going to fly this in and call it a night. It is way past my bedtime. So I'll just bear with me a second. I've got a few more seconds to burn through this asteroid. Oh, I've got a rare, a rarer material, germanium. I don't see that very often. Okay, let's look at what we got here. Bunch of abandoned limpets. 
whole lot of tritium and a couple of uh, a couple of materials. All right. Again, while we're loading up, let's look here. Um, I'm. I've still got a ways to go to finish off with this ship. I could go for uh, for another hour. Um, so I'm not being totally picky. Otherwise, I'd just wait for low temperature diamonds. But see, I've got I've got already got 50 tons of valuable material, valuable um, sellable commodities in my hold, and I haven't really been out that long in this ship. Um, it's going pretty quick. So uh, you see, you, you find the right place to prospect, and uh, you have the right equipment, you can make money pretty fast. Now don't look at the galactic average numbers. We know in this system, tritium is selling for 400000 a pop. Low temperature diamonds are selling for almost 600000 a pop. Um, so this is a lot of money in my hold. And if I wanted to search around for best prices, I could get significantly more for the low temperature diamonds. I could get at least twice as much. So, um, mining is still a great way to make money. Um, remember, subsurface mining now is much more profitable than it used to be. It's still a little tedious, but as you can see, once I started getting the uh, getting the feel for it again, feel for when to when to release the trigger, it, it starts to it starts to pay. So that's. Uh, definitely become a much more viable way of mining than it used to be. Let's see if we collected all this stuff up. Yep, we are all collected. I'm going to close my scoop. Cargo scoop rejected. And jet out of here. Go back to my navigation panel. Select my station. Can't super cruise yet. I'm still too close to the ring. I'll just get myself pointed at the station on the way home and we'll say goodnight. So, um, I hope you guys found this tutorial interesting. Um, hope you got a lot out of it. I'll try and go back and timestamp this video a little bit. Um, tomorrow or later on or a, a, you know a day or two down the road for posterity so if you want to come back and reference certain points of it you can uh, hope you enjoy this hope you watch again uh, like subscribe and comment all that good stuff tell me what you liked about it uh, if you want to see me do other tutorials on other topics let me know what that is and uh, you know keep flying out there have a great time um, Again, any feedback you give is great. Um, you want me to do more tutorials, or you want to watch me uh, watch me fly, uh, explore, whatever you want. Let me know, and I'll see if I can do it. Um, hope this was really helpful. I know a lot of people have been new to mining. There's a lot of new people joining the game that are probably curious about it. So, uh, uh, you know. You know, I hope you got a lot out of this. Hope I, I didn't um, confuse you too much because it's a lot of information. Uh, at least you got a video now. You can go back and look at it and, and get a feel for it. Uh, you'll really learn it once you start doing it. That's the uh, main thing. You just kind of have to know where to start pointing yourself and you'll figure it out. So, uh, again, thanks a lot for watching. Hope you come back and watch the replays uh, for reference and uh, let me know what you think. Have a great night. Keep flying. See you next time.